All right, my friends. Us, 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 us. YouTube live. We're live. What's good, my friends? Welcome back to Social Q&A Live, Season 2, Episode 13. It's uh, great to be back. It feels like it's been a long time. You know, we've only not done it for one week, but that actually feels like it's actually been about two weeks. So I hope you guys are super well. We've got a topic today, a topic that I'm surprised has not come up in the last three to four years of producing content, which all I have, I've, I've answered this question just one to one, but never made a piece of content on it, which is, I wonder why that's for another time. But day threes, a full guide to day threes. We've got a question, uh, personal context from an email, of course, uh, from Mr. Mr. B. I'll call him Mr. B. I was about to read his full name because I've got his email here. Let's not do that. And... So he's got a full question. He met a girl on Tinder. He's wondering about bringing, a, bringing this girl to, on a day three to his friend's birthday party, someone like that. And then I've got a, uh, and then we're going to go to full context, full, full guide. A lot of stuff to get into here. I've been, uh, been doing a lot of shit. I hope you guys are doing well. Let me, uh, let me check this chat box for a second. Schemo says, are you? Good morning, my friends. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Jay Prime comes in with that, that cap. Uh, cat got you. <laughs> I, uh, I visualize a cat when I ever see shit like that. Uh, yeah, let's do it. I've got it. Oh, by the way, if you guys are checking the chat box, I've already pinned a question from Squat Bro in there because he asked me a question. He's one of these guys in Europe, uh, probably, or he just can't make it on time. And I'll just say this right here as we're just getting started up, letting people get into the feed, that if you guys have questions about maybe during the week, uh, and you can't make it live to these sessions, you can for sure send them to me. However, I'll only uh, actually use them in the session if I feel like they're actually awesome questions, which is why his question is very good. Uh, so I'm going to use that. Otherwise, I just want to answer the questions from the guys that actually make the time to rock up live. So without further ado, for those of you that uh, have got your mozo matcha, whatever drink you've got, come by. Mm, yes. This is uh, not in the normal matcha bowl. This is matcha, but it's got lime and rock salt in it as well. I've already had uh, some other matcha. So, here we go. Uh, Richie Jr. goes, yo, Mr. Miyagi. Richie, good to see you here. So, uh, yes, there's a lot of stuff i got to catch you guys up on. There's a lot of stuff that's gone down over the last couple of weeks. One of the most incredible uh, Day Game Foundations boot camp I've ever had the pleasure of coaching. Uh, that was last weekend, the the short film editing, all that stuff. That might just come in later, but um, we'll save that. But this is what I'll say, actually, is that a lot of that I cover in this week's Bowl Sip free weekly email newsletter. So that's coming out at 3.20 p.m. today. If you guys aren't signed up for that, it's free. Head over to bowldojo.com, drop your email in. You'll get that. A quick sip of Social Dynamics. Oh, there is some Social Dynamics in it this week. Uh, some shit to do with a filming session, infill filming session I had. Uh, this instant, a couple instant dates and this really inflamed girl who got really, uh, she got a little feisty. She got, she got, well, this, this, I'm not going to give away too many details. You just got to get the email and, uh, yeah, it's worth it for sure this week. And so that being said, let's get into this guy's question off the bat. Oh, wait, before as well, before as well, if you are new to the social Q and A live, as this is season two, I feel like it's uh, worth it saying here, which is that the way that we run is that I've got a preloaded question from which one of you guys have sent me throughout the week. Uh, this guy reached out to me on the gram. Shout out to at Ui Tang one double Ui Tang one, and then we'll we'll go through this. We'll get through the content, and then I'll answer your questions live. I'll be dipping in and out of the chat box. Uh, say hello. Drop me a comment down below. Hope you guys are doing well. Drop me a thumbs up on this video as well if you are enjoying this, and uh, that helps it get sent out to the rest of the stream. That's just a good time. So let's do it. Again, to this guy's question. Uh, full guide to day threes. Let's go. I'm very excited for this topic. We just, so I just don't get to talk about this that much because it's it's a more advanced concept for sure. Uh, and just concept, even more of a concept. It's a more advanced experience. A lot of guys are in that 12 to 3, probably aren't going on day threes at the moment. We'll talk more about that later. Anyways, getting to Mr. B's question here. He sent me an email saying, Hey Adam, hey Adam, so here's some context. Met the girl on Tinder about three weeks ago, uh, went out for a couple of drinks yesterday. This is really recent as well. He sent me like this, he sent it to me at the beginning of the week. I made a, quite a few mistakes, such as a heavy make out without going the full nine yards, smoking weed with her later, and so not being able to communicate well after that, 
and not seeding for the day three. I really appreciate the fact that he could pin out, pin out what he did wrong. That's just as important as knowing what you did well uh, and what to improve. He goes on to say, she's still replying on WhatsApp, so she still seems interested. My friend's big birthday party is this Saturday. Is it a good idea to bring her with for the day three because of social proof? <clears throat> or is building a connection in isolation with her still very important? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. I can give more context to desire. Thanks, Adam. Kind regards, Mr. B. So, good question. Very good question. Good context. And I was thinking about how I wanted to tackle this because this is not just, uh, hey, answering this guy's one question. We're doing a full guide on day threes today. However long that takes, I don't fucking know. But like I said at the end of season one, listen, I'm not going to give any promises as to how quickly we get into your live questions. We're just going to go and we'll see how it goes. So <clears throat> I could start off with just the overall principles of my, there's, cause there's really, there's, there's the mindset behind day threes and there's the tactical execution. Yeah, let me do this. Let me fucking do this. We'll give you a table of contents. What we're going to do is I'm going to answer this guy's question straight up, uh, which is, it's a little more nuanced than I can give you right now, but just hang on. We're answering this question straight up. Second thing is that we're going to dive back and we're going to go through how to set up day threes, both in a mindset perspective and also through physical and emotional sexual, sexual escalation. Cause there's really two two moving parts to a day three. There's the mindset you have behind it and then the uh, execution as to your sexual escalation. A lot, of, a lot of big words coming out. By the way, I was going to share that. Hopefully you guys can't hear that, but it is pissing down at the moment. And then it's like amazing such sunshine like five minutes later. It's been going on all morning. So I apologize for any of that background noise. So diving back here, let's get straight. I'm going to answer his question straight up. He's asking about whether it's a good idea to set up a day three by bringing a girl to his uh, friend's big birthday party this Saturday. Listen, a day three, Mr. B, answering your question straight up. A day three is only an extension of the day two, which is only an extension of your initial interaction. AKA, you are only going to be reading the person in front of you, and that's all I'm concerned with. If you're reading this girl in front of you, you will know whether this is on or not. And also, to a more larger extent and degree, whether you would want to spend more time in a more socially, as in your words, socially proofed way. That's whether it's going to determine, be determined whether it's necessary or not. However, I will say this to make it even simpler for you, which is that it's not necessary. It's not necessary. I'm just realizing that answering his question at first, a lot of the things I'm going to say are not going to make sense because I haven't explained the principles behind it. So... Yeah, okay, I'll keep, since we started this way, I'll continue and you just get to, but don't worry, I'll piece it back in the end. So it's not necessary for you to start this day three uh, with having to prove again why you are of value. Listen, if you got to a day two and she decided that, and you guys connected, she was willing to come out on the day two, you two connected, and you told me here that you had a really heavy make out as well. You made a big, uh, you had a red flag by overdoing it and using my terms of going the whole nine yards uh, with the makeout, it's a big no-no on a day two, unless you're going to seal the deal. You've got to go the whole nine yards or don't go at all. Uh, shout out to the full guide to day twos. Uh, a, lot of this, a lot of this stuff I'm going to breeze over here that are principles from the day two, uh, like the, what are the, going the whole nine yards or not going at all. That's a whole principle. Just go back to the channel, full guide to day twos, you catch it there. So, so if you guys have already had a somewhat of a sexual connection, and you've already been in that space and you've already gone into a couple of principles we're going to go dive hard into with uh, physical sex escalation and physical uh, mental sexual escalation in terms of uh, taking her deeper, then there is no need to prove again. And actually, you can cause issues. You can, you can bomb this interaction, Mr. B, by doing so. This is one of the big mistakes. Actually, your mistake, or well, hang on. Hang on. What you're telling me here, this could potentially be what completely turns this girl off. This happens many times. One of the biggest mistakes guys make on a day three and setting up day threes with the girls. By the way, for those, I forgot to even say this. For those of you that don't know what a day three is, it is the second date, right? You have your initial interaction. The day two is the, uh, you know, the second time you've seen her, aka day two, and then day three, the third time. Just in case you didn't know, I probably should have a start. Anyways, moving forward. One of the biggest mistakes guys make setting up these day threes is that they do not take the girl deeper. 
they do not deepen the bubble that they they if if you imagine if you imagine that because there's one scenario a visualized scenario that i use for the entire date process is imagine that you're on this you're on this uh this you let's just say you're you could pick any beach in the world really let's just say let's just say south beach miami just because it's 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 vis, it's a uh, visceral for me because i had one of the most great two, great day tours in my life there let's say you met this girl on the uh south beach miami strip you approach her in the day uh you you guys connected blowing your minds together you set up for the day two okay and so on the day two you just spend all your time down on the beach getting to know each other connecting with each other and then on the day three right what i would like you to do is to take her into the water kilometers out grab her from in a bear hug position and say i'm going to take you deep now and you're going to dive down into the ocean of her 10 leagues deep and this is this visualization i'm giving you here is actually the structure we're going to go into later but i'm realizing that i want to kind of just honey dick you now and you're going to show her how to breathe and let her breathe through that process of taking her deep now the biggest mistake dialing back here is that most guys set up their day three to be almost a repeat of the day two now there's a lot of nuances here Mr. B, there's a lot of nuances here. This is not such a black and white scenario because for some girls, it would be a mistake to try and take her 10 leagues deep if you read her on the day two as being a shy, introverted, not willing to let go of herself and actually it was more than enough that she could just get a little hug action with you and then you try and escalate too quickly. You try and take her too deep too quickly. You'll blow her out. She's just not going to want to sign up to that. However, that's... I would say it's not most girls. It's definitely not most girls. That's, yeah, that's, that's definitely not most girls, but it's more to the opposite end of that, which is that when guys try to play it safe, they, they do not honor the sexual trust the woman places within him and by doing so turn her off. I've seen this again and again with my clients in which they had an amazing day two. They be they uh, whether they had, for example, like walk in uh, Central Park, shout out to one of my clients, walk in Central Park, you know, uh, went up to that, what's that fucking hill? There's a hill in Central Park, New York. That's like, a, it's like a little, it's on, it's at the top of Central Park, the top end, the north end, I think you call it, of Central Park. And there's like a hill uh, right up the top. You've got to climb pretty high. Well, not that high, but like, there's a bit of climbing to get there, but it's really isolated. And you kind of look out onto the city. And, you know, you're making out over there and that's great. And then maybe you went back to the car and you guys were just chilling, you're sharing. And then, okay, she's like, I'm ready. She's let go enough. And this is a key here. This is one of the key points. She's let go enough. But then you all of a sudden slide that text for the day three going, oh, hey, walk in the park again. Oh, hey, let's get another coffee. And this is what guys do. The biggest mistake is that they do not take her deeper. So just to, because I can sense that we are already going into the principles that we're already diving into the deeper shit that is not quite relevant to Mr. B's question. Oh, it is, but not specifically. So let me just wrap it back up for Mr. B, which is that, Mr. B, all I'm going to say to you is that I want you to read the girl in front of you. I want you to know the girl in front of you. And if she is keen, if she is very hot, if her flame is burning and raging for you right now, it would be the worst thing you could do. It would be the worst thing you could do to now set up a day three, starting with, hey, uh, let's call her Jenna. Hey, Jenna, let's go to my friend's big birthday. We can come along to my big friend's birthday. Can you see how that's a letdown for her? If she's already let go for you in the day two, she's gone for a heavy makeout. She she wants you to take her deeper. It's actually, it's it's disrespecting. It's it's uh, ignoring. It's being oblivious to the fact that she's actually let go. Because as a male mind, you might not realize this, but it's actually quite a big deal. It's actually quite a big deal for a girl to let go of herself both emotionally and physically in a sexual space of a masculine. It's quite a big deal. Right, for her to do that, what she, if she's uh, now she's not going to consciously say that to you, but you look at her actions, you know, you look at her comfortability, you look at how what was she like during that makeout. It would be very much of a letdown to her if you all of a sudden tried to get her to come to visit big friends, uh, this friend's birthday. Now that's a general principle. There are nuances to this, and I guess I oh, we're going to start going into the real content now. Kind of, it's it's hard not to because of his uh, because of. Uh, Hard explaining this question here, but let me just re-dive. Uh, he just said it's a good idea to bring up day three because of social proof. Let me just cut that out right there. No, you don't need to prove anything at this point. If you're in the situation where you got a girl that's keen for a day three, there is nothing to be proved. It's got nothing to do with your friends. It's got nothing to do with 
Not that there ever was anything to prove. A day two is a screening process from our end that we need to make sure that this girl's worth our time spending on a day three with. And if you have ascertained that, then there's nothing to be uh, proved, which is why uh, I'm just pause there again because I was about to go into what I really want to go into with this pod, with this uh, social Q and A. Uh, but let me just finish this question. See how it's hard not to. Uh, and then he also said it was building a connection, isolation. Her still very important. Uh, uh, yes, that is the most important thing. So what I would say to him if that is, he's one of my clients. I don't know. Him, I don't know him. I, I don't know him well at all. Uh, I, he may have messaged before, but I don't recall. But what I would just say to him is that. You are throwing a lot of variables. This is the last thing I'll say. You are throwing a lot of variables into this experiment that could potentially fuck things up. This is a lot, this is the the counterpoint. Like why wouldn't why would it be such a bad idea other than maybe letting her down on the sexual trust end, because that's probably number one. But there's also another glaring potential uh, fuckery that could happen here, which is, well, there's a lot more variables at a big friend's birthday. And this is what I'll say. If you are confident, Mr. B, that you can maintain your frame, that you will not start to become attached, you will not start to step outside yourself just because you've brought this girl that you're hot on right now to this friend's birthday, and all of a sudden you change into a different person, you start trying to act real arrogant and real cocky and trying to puff your chest and, you know, trying to be, trying to do too much, trying to do too much. There was a black kid in New York who came up to me. Uh, when I was on boot camp with my in the second boot camp this year in New York, and he just came up to me and and uh, to while I was with my client on the pre brief, and he just interrupted our conversation, didn't even say excuse me or anything, and he just came up with like his little petition form. And he's like, "Yo, man, I need you. I need you to look at and sign this petition, man." And I'm like, oh, "Actually, now's not a good time," and I just cut it. And it is like he his face. It looked like. I don't know, he just dropped his ice cream or something. He's like 10 years old, maybe. And then he goes, you do too much. <laughs> and he just walked away. He just walked away. He goes, you do too much. And uh, But I was teaching him a lesson that you, can't, you don't just interrupt people. If he had said, excuse me, I'm sorry, guys, I just just one moment of your time, I probably would have actually given him the time of day. It's because he's super rude about it. Anyways, and it's just funny. It was a funny little thing that went in my mind. But are you going to be doing too much, Mr. B? Are you going to be doing too much? That's what happens to a lot of guys where you see this in high school so much where your best friend or just maybe not even your best friend, but a guy that you are pretty, your mates with and you think's a pretty good guy, like a pretty nice guy, cool guy to hang out with. The moment he gets around a girl, he turns into a dick. He turns, he turns into an idiot. Like he starts saying things that you would never hear him say. And it's just like, what is this person right now? That's the variables I'm talking about, which is why, listen, if, you're a, if you've got a strong masculine base, you're confident within yourself, you feel like that you could handle having other guys come up to this girl and talk with her, that's another thing. Are you bringing this girl to this friend's birthday party? If you're attracted to her, well, there's probably going to be a lot of other guys that are attracted to her. What if, what if I was at that party, right? This is a really good question because this happens all the fucking time, like in my own life. What if... I was at that party. Would you be okay with me coming up and just talking to your girl for five, 10 minutes? Could you not only distance, go speak to other people, mingle with other people, do this socializing as you're talking about, and then be fine and know that your connection's fine with her and have me talk to her and then come back and not change. That's what I'm talking about, not change, not try and protect her, not try and protect her from engaging with other masculine beings. There's a lot of fucking variables that could be thrown in her here, which are no problem if you are a deeply centered, grounded, masculine being that is completely removed from all attachment to the outcome with this woman. If you are that person, by all means, Brit, start the day three at this uh, friend's birthday party. However, and now this is where we will go dive into the real context or the real content of day threes, which is that it should not end there. Right, your your day three. The only reason I'm giving you I'm giving you a slight thumbs up, a slight green flag, which is that it's okay to start day threes in public at house parties. Uh, a lot of my day threes start in public. However, the plan should be that it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. That you will take her deeper, and then to the part two of the physical and sexual escalation that you will let her breathe. So, 
that's my answer. That's my answer to you. Uh, you are now going to need to, Mister B. You are now going to need to listen to the rest of the podcast to understand what happens after this big birthday bash that you've got suited up for her. However, that should answer your question right off the get. So, my friends, let's take a pause here. I want to dive into the chat just to engage with some of you guys. Say hi. If you're enjoying this content right now, drop me a thumbs up on that. Smash it down below. Drop me a comment. Get your questions in there. And uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we've got some content to dive in today. This is going to be, uh, I'll answer the live questions. Like, I won't answer any questions now. I'm just going to dive into the chat just to say hi to a few of you. And then, uh, don't worry, you'll know, you'll know when we get into these questions. All right, let's go. Oh, shit. Hang on a second. We already, we already got a super chat right here. Richie Jr. came in with a five pound. I was always going to say five dollar bit because you're the first British, you're the, pro, oh, no, maybe not the first, maybe first British donation. Uh, sick. Thank you very much. So greatly appreciated, Richie. He hasn't actually dropped a question yet. Uh, however, uh, Richie, because you haven't dropped a question yet, just drop your question below. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Just drop your question below and I'll get to it. Of course, all the super chat questions and uh, Richie's five pounds there just gets goes straight back to the channel and uh, goes all to the, it's his brick in the dojo. So his question will get bumped to the top. I'll give more context to that later on once we get past this content. Uh, but thank you so much, Richie. I really appreciate it. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, bu- 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 well, actually, the only other question that I hadn't addressed was uh, Tobias CG. Uh, Toby, shout out, what's going on, T? Uh, his message was retracted, though. Again, I still don't know what that means. I'm sur- Every time that happens, I always think I'm going to go back and onto Google and type, what does message retracted mean on YouTube? I just don't know if it's you guys doing it or if it's YouTube doing it. I think it's you guys, but I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. T says, hey, maybe T changed his username. Maybe that's that. I don't know. Anyway, so let's get back on this content here. Um... Oh, sorry, for, sorry, first time on the chat, pressing buttons. Okay, I got you, man, I got you. So, yes, I thought I would start this uh, social Q&A on the day threes with Mr. B's uh, question, because it's quite sad school. There's a lot of awesome context that'll uh, give you some something to chew on, and it brings it makes it very real. But now we're actually just going to step out. Now we're going to get to... It's almost like we're going to rewind in a sense, because as you said, there's a lot of things that I had to hold back on in explain in answering his question, but now we're just going to go balls deep. So on the full guide to day threes. So this is how I think about day threes in general. Take her deeper and let her breathe. A day three is all about taking the woman deeper and letting her breathe. Now to the uneducated and to those who are not privy to my mind or have not spoken about me this with me about this before. You might just pass over that and go, okay, take a deeper, let her breathe. Let's get into it. What does that re- What does that mean? Am I- that, that's it, actually. <laughs> no, of course, there's a lot more to it. But actually, within those two statements, that is the two key components to a day three. Take her deeper. What does that mean? Which is that a day two and a day three, the entire interaction with this feminine, which is blowing your fucking mind, is all a process of leading and escalation, both on an emotional and physical sexual level. Okay, what we're talking about there at the beginning, when I say take her deeper, that is the emotional compartment. That is the emotional section. Compartment wasn't the right word I was looking for. Section wasn't the right whatever, fuck it, fuck it, the word will come to me, it'll come back to me, but anyways, it's the emotional side, we'll use that, it's the emotional side of that phrase, of those two statements I gave you before, take her deeper, so I want to bring you guys back to that visualization, right, we started this interaction, being this girl up on the street, right, on this beach town, imagine this beautiful beach town strip, Miami South Beach, you meet her there, you stop her, it's amazing, you set up for the day two, the next day, you bring her down to the, onto the beach, you spend all day on the beach, getting to know each other, screening her. Oh, actually, it only was initially just for an hour, go back to the principles of how to set up a day two. But we found out through the process of us, process of us connecting, we wanted to spend all day together. And then, uh, but then, then, of course, we made sure we kissed that girl. Of course, we made sure that, that she was able to let go of herself somewhat. And we're going to talk about this letting go of herself uh, a lot more, and that will come pretty shortly, actually. 
but we realized actually this girl is a cool girl and that I would, I would actually like to spend more time with her. And, and that, so this, you can see constant leading, constant escalation. And now when we set up for the day three, the day three of this part of this visualization is now that we will, I'm going to ask her to take my hand and I'm going to drag her out into a kilometers deep into the ocean. I just so far deep where it's just her and I. And then I'm going to ask her to trust me. And I'm going to grab her from behind in a bear hug position and I'm going to dive deep with her. Right? And I want you to visualize this. Just imagine being out in this vast ocean with this girl, with this feminine energy you're just so connected with. And you say, I need you to trust me. Right? And she says, okay, I trust you. And you just take her from behind and you take a deep breath and you just take her under and you just dive. And just imagine now your visualization goes to just this just just kilometers of deep dark blue water and the sun is just it's like it's breaking through the top of the water and you just see these two little this little this little little being just just two intertwined just diving down deeper and deeper and deeper 10 leagues deep is what i'm talking about now i want you to carry that visualization right because that visualization right there specifically for the day three is actually all you really need to know and now diving back, I just wanted to set up the uh, context here with that visualization. Now I'll break it down for you what that means in real terms. So emotional, take her deeper. What does that really mean? Which is that on a day three, all I'm looking to do is deepen the bubble with her, which is now, I said to Mr. B's starting off at the uh, birthdays, uh, his friend's birthday. Listen, my typical day threes, they always start later in the day because that is, it's just like, it's the plan that we're going to spend tonight together. You can start a day three at night. However, often is the case with me is that I'll start a day three, uh, five, six p.m., uh, depending on whether it's winter or summer. It's definitely in summer, five, six p.m. And also one other thing as well is that a lot of day threes are very impromptu and that there is very little much of a plan. There's, there's next to no plan. Uh, I try to spring it on them. And there's a, uh, there's a lot of cool tactical tips coming in here, which I'm just going to pause for a second. That just, that'll get your mind excited. But I just want to stay on this for a second, which is, okay, we're going to start this day, this day three at 5, 6 p.m. It already sets up the idea on an emotional level that, oh, this guy's taking me deeper. Like, because on the day two, look at what happened. On the day two, I wouldn't start a day two at 5, 6 p.m. ideally. Right, I wouldn't, and I'm definitely not with the plan in mind. Like it, it can happen, but definitely not with the plan in mind that we're going to spend the all night together. I would not be setting up something like that. However, on a day two, you know, I've got a cheeky hour here, a cheeky hour there. Let's just get to see if we're cool together. That's the idea of a day two, but this is different for her now. So it already sends the signal to her if you are starting a day three later in the day or even the beginning of the night, it sends an emotional signal to the girl that, oh, I'm going a bit deeper here. It's going to be a little bit deeper. So that's already part one of this leading through. Now, on the day three, and, this, and I can pin this back up now, the key is to finish and not only finish, but leading to the finish of as deep as possible. You don't want to spend nearly any time fucking around that. You might go to a tapas bar. You might start the day three down at the beach and you get an ice cream or you get a drink down at the beach or you're in the mall and just like Friday night shopping or, or whatever, or you just take her down to the river uh, for you know, 30, 60 minutes. But very quickly, you should be getting into the most deeply isolated spot possible, which should be either her apartment or your apartment, right? Your place or her place. Or if, uh, or if that's not your Airbnb, get an Airbnb, get a hotel. And there's a lot of guys, some of my younger clients who are, aren't comfortable bringing girls back to their place for whatever the reason may be, uh, fine then, get high, just uh, in Sydney, I think Sydney's the first Australian city to do it. I think Melbourne might have them. I know Sydney definitely has them. They have uh, the, uh, they've got like, uh, you know, in Japan, they uh, have the the cubicle hotels. They have similar setups in, in uh, Sydney, really cheap stuff like that. Even just a hostel room if you really need to you know, 50, 60 bucks, you know, be ahead of, be ahead of the game there, but you should be always looking to lead a day, day three deeper as soon as possible. That's this emotional compartment of which that I, I just want to take you deep. I want to take you deep here. This is about us right now. It's not about, and to Mr. B's thing about social proof or about trying to, uh, uh, to do a, a repeat of what the day two was. It's not necessary. If anything, it is actually hurting you. 
It is hurting you to beat around the bush and to try and pace her through. Now, of course, there's a nuance. There's definitely a nuance here, which is that if you're dealing with a girl that maybe the two out of 10 girls that have been sexually abused before that have sexual hangups that were really reluctant to let go into the kiss, really, oh yes, here we go. This is what we're going to talk about, the letting go shit. This is what I really, this is one of my favorite parts of day three is that it's now organically popped up. This is going to be, this is good. So, and you were able to read that this girl was not so good with letting go, but she showed you something. She showed you a little something that made you go, but I know that if I gave this girl more time, then I think I could get her to let go of herself a little bit more. <laughs> Fuck yes. Let's go. I'm going to dive straight into it right now. I'll say this here and now, which is that of all of the girls that I went on day twos with, that I did not want to go on a day three with, that I chose not to message back, that I chose not to engage into the day three with, it was far and few between because I lacked a connection with them. Right? It's far and few between just because we just did not get each other on an energetic base set. That's it's actually very rare. It's actually very rare to meet a girl that you spend like an hour, hour and a half at the botanics on a day two of a coffee and tea, and you just like have absolutely no connection with. It's very rare that that happens. But what happens more than often, more than often is this. The girls that I do not want to go out on a day three with, that I do not message back after a day two, is because they were not able to let go of themselves. And this is when we're going to get into some real good shit here, which is the letting go. Because if you could really, you could boil down the escalation from an initial interaction, whether it be in the club, on the street, through the day two, now through to the day three, as really just a process of letting go and allowing her to let go of herself. Now, as a beginner, but Adam, what about me, bruh? <laughs> what about me, bruh? <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, yes. As you are beginning as well, it is also a process for you, my friend. For Jeffrey, yes, for you, it is also a process to teach yourself how to let go in the space of a day two and in the space of a day three. But once you, let's call that, that's, I'm speaking there to the Jeffreys, the tw- <laughs> <laughs> Jeffries <laughs> to 12 to 3. If you are unconscious incompetence, 12 to 3, absolute beginners, the day three is also, a pro- and day two, this whole process is also a journey of you learning to let go. But once you start to enter 6 to 9, 6 to 9 and definitely 9 to 12, which is conscious competence and unconscious competence, what you start to realize is that actually I'm more than capable, more than ready to let go of myself the moment this girl rocks up on a day two, day three. Shout out to the bowl sip email, free weekly email newsletter, sign up, bodojo.com, last week. Last week, I gave you guys one of the greatest tips I've ever learned on a day two. And I gave you a real story from it. And it was the first time I truly learned this core principle of indifference is king. And that was in the Bolsip weekly email newsletter last week. It doesn't go anywhere else. So if you didn't fuck, if you were signed up, you didn't fucking see it. And uh, just, but by the way, you've got a few hours before I send out today's issue at uh, 3.20 p.m. So anyway, starting back in here. Anyways, all I'll say there was that when you become consciously competent and unconsciously competent, you're, you've got over this hurdle on going out on a date with a girl of having to be someone that you're not, of having to prove something that you're not, of having to do, do too much, as that black kid in New York said to me. You're not trying to do too much anymore. You're not stepping outside yourself. You will actually have let go of yourself. And so now, and so bring them back, right back here, which is that, so now it's more a process of, well, I just want to see this girl and I want to see her for her. I want to see if she can really let go of herself. And that is the number one thing that I am screening for on a day two. You, you think like, what are you screening for on a day two that allows you to get to a day three on a girl that would actually make me want to say to a girl, yeah, I want to see you again. Notice the abundance mentality here that uh, I don't have time to be wasting with girls on, date, on dates that I'm not connected with. Next girl, please. So, so the number one thing that I'm screening for here, and it's, it's part of this emotional section I'm talking about, the emotional escalation, the emotional sexuality of a day three component which is that how much was she willing to let go of herself? Far and few between has it been me not inviting a girl out to a day three because we just didn't get each other. That's like, 
that's been maybe like 10% of the hundreds and hundreds of day twos I've been on over the last uh, eight to nine years. It's maybe been 10% or I just legitimately don't like this person. Like we just, we just don't connect. But 90% of the time of the girls that I do not invite back out, it is because they were not able to let go of themselves on the day two, which manifests as they were stuck in their minds. They were portraying, portraying themselves to be someone that they weren't. They couldn't let go at least into the kiss. It's one of my favorite. I said about, I said this in uh, how to kiss the girl, social Q and a live, how to kiss the girl. I said that a lot of girls are absolute fish until you start kissing them. A lot of girls are just verbally not very good at communicating, but communicate so much better and communicate not just like, I mean, verbally, but are able to communicate their energy and their essence of being far more effectively through physicality. There's a lot of guys are like this. And I think by and large, as human beings, this is us in general. English language is very new to us. Homo sapiens have been evolving and growing for much, much longer without the use of the English language. So I think it's natural for all human beings. So that's my always number one thing, that if I'm on a day two of a girl, and I know we're kind of segued off, don't worry, we'll come back to the day threes, but it's actually quite relevant because I'm talking about the letting go stuff, which is uh, if a girl, if a girl is just boring as shit, <laughs> if a girl is just as boring as you can possibly be, what I've been saying is we're just not connecting. I will always, the last like Hail Mary even if I'm just not really that interested in this girl, I will still kiss her to see if she lights up through the kiss. And also more importantly, lights up, what does that mean? Can she let go into it? Can she let go? If a girl can't let go into a kiss, I'm probably not going to want to see her on a day three unless I can sense there's a lot of psychological trauma there that if I gave her more time. And this is how this whole thing spurred off, which is that there is the nuance that a day three will not escalate as deep as I want you to escalate it to. If you are dealing with a girl that has a lot of psychological trauma, daddy issues, there's a video I've got on that that's uh, getting a little bit of traction at the moment. Uh, if you want to know more about that, the, uh, the ice queen or the turtle shell. Is that what I call them? I think so. Yes? No? Yes. I don't Whatever. Um, go back to that video. It's there. Uh, Girls with daddy issues, girls that uh, have been sexually abused before, for sure, in other ways. That's the nuance that I just wanted to cover, that if we start, now that I go into more of my heart, not hard and fast, but the more the main principles behind the day three, as to why it would not go as deep as what I'm about to tell you. You've got to read the girl in front of you. <clears throat> so... So yes, coming back to the emotional connection now on the day three, all I want to see is can she let go of herself? So that's why on a day three, stepping down to tactics right now, which is that let's say, okay, I'm going to pick her up at her place or I'm going to meet her in the city and we might get a quick drink. We might get a quick bite somewhere. However, it's straight back to her place or straight back to my place or, or skip all that. It starts at her place or it starts at my place. Number one, honors the sexual trust she's placed in you, which means that, oh, he gets it. He gets it that I was able to let go in the day too, that I let go of myself to the extent and that he's going to guide me, he's going to lead me and that this guy is showing me his masculine frame by leading it deeper off the get. This is why I said uh, when I'm talking about variables before, yeah, reduce the variables. Reduce the variables that could fuck with this. Keep it as simple as possible. Like you bring this girl to a friend's birthday party, a lot of variables there. I'm not saying you can overcome them, you can't overcome them, but it's just, just it's uh, more difficult for sure. So starting off in a more intimate space. Now, this is where we're going to slide. I've talked about table of contents before. Now we're going to slide into the letter breathe. I say it's not that it's not that complicated. It's just that it's such a huge mistake. It's such a huge mistake that guys make. Like, you know, so many of my clients say that the day three, day four, and day five, God forbid, that they just kept doing the same shit on days as they did on the day twos not leading her into a deeper bubble, to a deeper space. And if you look at that visualization I used before, what are they not doing? What are they not doing in that beach to the ocean visualization I gave you? They're not asking the girl to come with them, right? They, they've, they've met her back down on the beach, but they have not asked her to say, hey, take my hand, right? Take my hand, I'm going to take you out and take her out a kilometer deep, like a, kilometer, a kilometer out into this ocean. 
right? That's the segment I'm talking about right there. Now, segment two is actually diving with her, which now we slide into the sexual and physical escalation, aka let her breathe. So, with the letter of breathe, I said before that you could have just brushed over that and go, okay, that's a nice little, nice friendly title. Now let's get into the real shit. No, that's actually the real shit. <laughs> it's actually it. So I think I'll start this with a story because this is some, I've got many stories to go of this. <clears throat> it's just one of the greatest things I've ever found in terms of uh, how to manage day threes and how to effortlessly slide into sexual escalation physically with a girl, which is this. So you've taken her, you've taken her deep, which means we're back at my place and or back at her place. Let's just, in this example, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story of my last, how the beginnings of my last serious relationship. So this is a day three. We had the most incredible day two. I was absolute fire. It's incredible. It's what I call magic in the gardens. It lasted all day long and all night long as well. And uh, so I think it was about a week later, maybe a week and a half later, we got into this day three and it was a... It was like a Wednesday or Thursday night. I think it's probably a Wednesday or Thursday night. I talked about, now. yeah, yeah, this is some tactics we're going to talk about, about impromptu. The best day threes, uh, in my experience, are the ones where you just spring it up on a girl and you go, hey, what are you doing tonight? You know, just on like a, on, a, on a Wednesday or Thursday night or even on a Saturday night or a Sunday night, but, but you don't plan it so far uh, in advance. You just sprint up and go, what are you doing tonight? And I remember saying, so what do you, you know, what's going on tonight? And she's like, oh, I just finished my exam. In this example, just finished my exam. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pick you up and we'll do some green tea and chill uh, in my place. So I go to hers and uh, she's not that too far away from me. I pick her up and the moment she gets in the car, she is in the foulest of moods. She is just, ah, oh, I just remember, you know, getting in the car just with this like negativity bubble around her. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like we had such an amazing day too. This is not the girl that I thought she was. And, uh, and so I'm like, what's going on here? And she starts telling me that I think she, can't, she thought she had bombed her exam. And so, uh, and her academics were really important to her at that time. So, so this is at uni as well. She's at uni exams. So, which are a little bit more important than high school. So, oh, yeah, okay. Well, whatever. It depends. Depends on what stage of life you're in. You could wait them. Anyways, so she's in a bad mood. I pick her up and I'm like, okay, well, uh, this is at the time when I was still eating McDonald's. This is fucking a long time ago. And, uh, and so I remember we drove to this McDonald's. We go into the car park. I didn't actually get anything. She got a soft serve. She just went, and that was what was so strange about it. She's just like, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, let's, what do you, I'm not sure if I want to take her back for this great tea and chill straight away. So I think we just, I'm not sure. I, she, I think she said, let's just go to Macca's. We'll get a soft serve. I didn't want to get any at the time. I just remember myself not having one. I'm not sure why, but whatever the reason. She had a, she had a soft serve and we're sitting there in the car park. We're sitting in the car park. She's eating it. And I, re, I just like, it's a bit strange because we had this amazing day too. And uh, that went all day and all night. And then I'm like, I'm like, are you okay? I remember looking at her in the car going, are you okay? Like, is this, should, should, uh, that's fucking right. Not only did I say, are you okay? But I said to her, hey, listen, I think I should just drop you home. And uh, that sent a bit of a shockwave to her. She goes, because I, in my mind, I've already gone through segment one here, which is that I'm planning to take her deeper. I've sprung this, her on a, on a week night. And that it's nighttime as well. It's, it's, it's an escalating deeper. Look, listen, you say to a girl, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to pick you up. We'll go for this green tea and chill. That's a very deep escalation for her. <clears throat> Especially when the previous day two started as, <coughs> let's go for an adventure in the gardens. So she knows. She knows what's going on here. Yet she's still in this weird kind of, she agreed to come, but she's still in this weird kind of mood. So I'd rather not entertain that. I don't want to take her 10 leagues deep. I don't want to go slide into let her breathe, aka physical sexual escalation of a girl who's in a very negative mental space. So I say to her, should I just drop you home? Like, is this not a, you know, it's not a good time. And but sent a bit of a shockwave to her. And she's like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Let's just go back to yours. Let's go back to yours. And so I drive back to my place. And I had never done this with a girl before. And that's, that's what was so beautiful about this was that what is now a system and a process that I have just refined and refined, practiced and practiced without fail 
It always gets me to wherever I need to get to with physical sexual escalation with girls. And it all stemmed from this one experience, which I didn't even plan. I just, the, my default was this, was that when we got inside, I'm like, what's the best way of calming this girl down? And because remember, we haven't had sex at this point. We had a, a, we had a, a weird kiss before. We hadn't had sex before. Not even a full makeout. You know, principles, just a, a few little passionate, passionate movements. And then we, when we break it up, don't go the full nine yards. Shout out to the principles, day two, full guy. And so I, I think to myself, what's the best way of kind of calming her down and just getting her to relax, which is that, all right, let's light that candle up, get that green tea going. Green tea, honey, and lemon. Oh, you got to get the balance right. But once you get the balance right, it is a elixir for sure. So I get that out and we're sitting on my bed. We're sitting like, we were in my bedroom, the candle's on. I'm sitting like at the, near the, where the bed head would be, like where the wall is. And I'm sitting cross-legged, drinking my green tea. She's sitting directly in front of me. Like, imagine like staring straight into my eyes, cross-legged as well. She's got her green tea. And I'm just kind of sitting there and we're not saying a lot of much, but I'm just trying to think in my mind, just get her to relax, get her to relax. Like, don't try, don't. It doesn't make sense to try and have sex with her right now. It doesn't make sense to try and make out of her. My heart's certainly not beating for that reason. By the way, shout out to those of you that watched How to Kiss the Girl and took those. Some of you took the real principles. I think it was, who was it? Was it Rami? I think it was Rami or someone. One of you guys messaged me saying that you took the principle of listening to your heart as a sign to kiss her and you fucking nailed it. Shout out to you. I forgot. I think it was Rami, but it was a few guys. Anyways, go back to that to listen on that. But so I'm listening to my heart and oh, now's not the right time to kiss her. And so we're drinking this green tea. And I remember saying to her, listen, I just put your green tea down, take you, put them down. And just give me your hands. Just give me your hands. Okay. And I'm like, we'll just come over here now. I take her hands. I pull her in close. Like I just pull her hands in, which if you're imagining we're sitting in front of each other, when we're not that far away. And what I do is that as I pull her into me, I lie down. So it's like, take her hands, lie down, which infers that we're going to go into a spooning position. So it's like this into this. For those of you on the podcast, you just have to go look at the channel. But just imagine you're sitting in front of a girl, you get her, you put both your hands out in front of you. She grabs your hands, you pull her in, you turn to your side and we go into a spooning position. And I'm not really thinking about this. I'm just doing what feels right about how would I make someone more relaxed and more calm? By the way, noting that I've just, you know, I'm in a, a three casual relationship at this time. I just come off my first ever 30 day challenge, completely turned my life around. No sex, no day twos, no layers, no relationships for two years prior to that. Prior to that 30 day challenge, hmm, power of the 30 day challenge. And, and so I'm quite comfortable with sexuality at this point. And so I'm just, well, I'm just want to take her hands and I just want to lie down with her. And so I've got my arms wrapped around her and she's lying on her side. And she's not saying anything. She just gets it. She gets this right here. And all I start to do is just breathe. And as I feel myself breathing, I notice that in the silence and the crackle, and all that you can hear is the crackle of the candle. I notice like how fast her breath rate is. I notice how fast, and because if you're spoon to spoon with someone, you can feel their heart beat. You can feel their heart beat. And you just notice how tense her musculature is. You notice how she's not in the frame of mind right now for any type of sexual escalation. So all I do with her is I just, I, we, I probably think we probably spent a good, a good hour, just a good hour in this position, just arms wrapped around her, just breathing. And at the time, I wasn't doing what I'm about to instruct you guys on and what I now do with all girls because it wasn't a conscious thing at the time. It was just like, this is my best, I, my best guess. And what I realized is that after about an hour of doing this, her breath came in sync with mine, that the rising and falling of her chest was in sync with mine, that her heartbeat was relatively, like at least it might not be on the exact beat per minute, but it was, it had gone, maybe if she was 10, 20 beats above me, it's now within three to five beats within me. You know, it's just really close now. And then I went into make out of her. And then ensued the most passionate night of romance and uh, sexual pleasure that I ever experienced up until that time, just psychological connections being imploded within my mind, that complete let go, the complete sense of uh, there's no Adam anymore, there's no there's no this girl anymore, 
it's just these two beings wrapped in each other. And, uh, and we had sex that night and it was incredible. And, and so after that, I woke up the next morning and I said to myself, it's got to be something to that. It's the first time I ever did it with a girl where I, I abandoned all plans of physical escalation. Previously, I had tried to not force, not, so I was going to say not try and force the girl. I had tried to force the issue. I had tried to plow, quote unquote, plow through girls' negativity vibe or just lack of comfortability and just try, you know, try again, try again, try again. And, uh, but not doing something in between the try agains, not doing something in between to change her physiological and emotional psychological state. So what I had done this time, well, there's got to be something here. Why, why did this work so smoothly? Why was this so good? And so now coming back in, now to the overall section and dialing back up here for now for give you guys a straight tactics on this uh, sexual escalation in a more physical sense on a day three. This, this, this segment of let her breathe. I don't mean that just metaphorically. It's both. It is both on a mindset, but also on a real tactical level. I do this with all girls. All girls I do this with. Any girl that is watching this that has been in a sexual space with me goes, oh, so that's what he was doing. <laughs> so that's what it was going on. Uh, I can give you so many really, so many examples, but but just I, the tangents and the stories are thick in this. So I just I'm just realizing I just want to give you guys a few little bullet points here, some rapid bullet points to take away, which is when you bring this girl back on a day three. Let's say let's just take Mr. B here. Let's say Mr. B, whose context of this girl that he met, and he's let's say that they started the day three. Uh, at his friend's birthday party and he managed to still maintain his frame and it's all well and good and then he brought the girl back to his place right when he gets back to her place don't don't fap about don't fap about by with the stuff you would be doing on a day two with trying to you know make sushi with her try to cook dinner with her or uh you know try and do all that that friendly friendly stuff all you need to be worried about right here is principle number one which is taking her deeper deeper space logistically get her into a deeper space as fast as possible, okay? Which means you're not gonna spend all night at your friend's birthday party. You're gonna get her, you're gonna take her back to your place or her place as soon as possible or Airbnb, hostel, hotel, just a nice intimate space. Okay, once you get there, now slide into segment two, which is the let her breathe. Now, on a day two, this is not necessary. It's not necessary because we don't, one, we don't know this girl at all at this point. So we're screening to know whether we would want to give her that intimacy of letting her breathe which we'll, I'll get more specific with in a second. But also, we haven't had time to read this girl. We don't know if she's ready for that yet. So it's not prompt. That's why I say you never need to have sex on a day two. It can happen. And by all means, go for it if the vibe is right. However, it's never necessary. On a day three, it is absolutely necessary to slide into the part two, which is letting her breathe. Now, you can do this in a number of ways. I am not telling you that you now need to go and spoon of a girl for an hour and feel her heart rate and feel her breathing rate and allow them to come in sync with yours. It is tremendous though. It is fucking grand if you can do that though. It is incredible what happens and how reliable that process is. Now just thinking about like all the girls that, now I don't not do it. I don't remember the last day three that I didn't spend with a girl in some time body to body, just feeling her breathe and allowing her breathing and her heart to come in contact with mine and slow down to mine and actually physically altering hers. We'll talk more about that in a second. I've got a good story of that. <clears throat> I don't remember the last time I didn't do that. However, am I saying that you must do that? Not necessarily. There are many ways of executing this part of the process. Because the, what's the principle? The principle is that as we are now a kilometer out in the ocean with our heads just above, uh, just, just above, just above the waterline, and that you say to her, listen, give me a hand, bring her around, I'm going to take you deep here. That part, when I talked about the visualization of diving into the depths of the ocean with her 10 leagues deep, the only way that she could breathe in that scenario is if she can let go of herself. You're essentially asking her to allow you to be her oxygen. In that visualization where you've, where you've just got your arms wrapped around her and you're diving deeper and deeper and deeper, kilometers deep into this ocean, leagues deep, you're her oxygen. In that visualization, that is what you are doing for her. Now, what does that mean in real terms? 
what it means is that you need to take her into a physical space in which that she can let go of herself. That is all sexual escalation. That is all physical sexual escalation needs. Physical sexual escalation does not require penetration, right? Sex itself is not the same as sexual intercourse. Intercourse refers to the actual penetration of things, which requires actually very little connection and why it is actually very unsatisfying when you have not married what I'm talking about before and talking about now in terms of the emotional letting go and the emotional sexual component. Component! That was the fucking word I was talking about before. Not compartment, but component. Sex, Sexual intercourse is nothing without the emotional component, which is why uh, porn is so devoid of real emotional stimulation. It's just maybe when you're 13, you've never seen it before. But when, when but now it's like, it just doesn't, it won't do anything for you once you've really experienced the true emotional sexual connection as well. So part two here, once you've taken her to a deeper isolated space, all you now need to do is allow her the emotional space sexually to be able to let go. Now, whether you do that with the green tea, the honey and the lemon and spooning with her for an hour and allowing her, and it doesn't have to be for an hour. Some girls achieve it much quicker. Some girls just, I remember the first ever time we did it for about an hour. Uh, I'll get into a story on that in a second. I just want to keep remembering. I want to keep pinning that story in my mind, but that's my way. That's Adam's way that because that's congruent with me. If you don't drink green tea, you don't do the honey and the lemon and you don't do the candle and the meditation and, and you're not with the breathing and the heart rate, that's, then okay, that's fine. That's fine. If you're, I don't have to step outside myself here for a second, just think about some of my clients maybe. If you're the type of guy that you relate more through music, or you're just more of a music guy and you really like R&B music, one of you guys asked me about the weekend uh, last on the last social Q&A I fucked up on that I told you that I did like the weekend's music I fucked up I I I was mistaking the weekend with Khalid, Khalid I like Khalid's music and there I said there were some tracks of with of the weekends in my Uwe Tang 9000 playlist on Spotify the public one but there's not there's no tracks from the weekend in that listen I don't the weekend's not bad but I don't really get down with it Khalid though I get down with his shit there's a few tracks in there uh, that I'll get down with in the R&B space. Anyways, if you're just that type of guy that you relate more through your music, a great way of allowing a girl to let go of herself is just put on some chill music. Put on that Seven Days by Craig David. Put on... Uh, uh, now I'm going to get a chat. Now I, hold on. Now I'll do it. Now I'll do it. Hold on. Now I'll get one of... Because uh, I'll actually be able to find it. I'll actually be able to find uh, one of his tracks. It's from the Disclosure album. So there's a couple. Don't Pretend. So this is by Khalid. Khalid or Khalid, however you want to say it. No, no, no. From Free Spirit. The album is Free Spirit. Most of these tracks are perfect for sex. Most of these tracks, are, it's a very sexual album. Don't Pretend featuring Safe. That one. And Intro. Intro. Like it's just track one. Intro. It's, it's fucking hype though. Those two right there, you'll find those in the Uitang 9000 playlist. Uh, search those up. So you want to bring that... Hold on, I'm just getting my YouTube display back up here. Where the fuck did it go? Where are we at here? Did I just... Uh, I thought, For a second there, I thought I just closed the YouTube chat. Oh, the YouTube live stream. I didn't. I'm pretty sure I did. No, I did. Good. <laughs> so anyways, so you got that. And so say you're more of a music guy. Right? A great, great way of getting a girl to let go of herself and which all humans really relate to is music. Music allows ourselves allows ourselves to remove the concept of self. And many a time I've been able to just be able to, even if I'm not really in physical contact with the girl, you could just say, you could just say, listen to this girl, you breathe, say you Mr. B. Let's say Mr. B's that music guy. He's brought this girl back from the party. Instead of fapping about by making sushi and and uh, and watching a movie, no 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 fuck all that shit. Fuck the movie. Fuck the sushi. That was day two shit. She needs something deeper here. You need to take her deeper. You're asking her now to dive deeper below the ocean. And what you're going to do is that you're just going to lie down in your bed. You take lead. You put on this track. So you put on this music. I would highly recommend getting a playlist going. And uh, in my own, uh, in my own uh, Spotify, I have a particular playlist for intimacy called... Uh, there's actually a couple. I'll get you a couple of the names right here. 
uh, Panda Emperor is the first one. <laughs> the Panda Emperor. Uh, let me give you some idea of the tracks that are in there. Simple Things by Miguel featuring Chris Brown. Uh, Crash, Crash by Usher. Rock With Me by Trevor Jackson. Seven Days by Craig David. I Want to Know by Sick Kick. Uh, all We Need by Odessa. Listen, all these tracks, all the tracks in this playlist are all tracks that will get someone. They're very romantic. They're very... Uh, heavy beats, heavy bass. They allow uh, a girl to let go of herself and yourself as well. And I'll just, for a long time, I'll just, just lie back down on the bed and just say, and just say, lie next to me. You don't even have to touch her. You don't even have to touch her. Of course, if you're at this stage, she probably wants to touch you and she probably wants to touch as well. But what I would allow a girl to do is just spend time listening to this music. I would highly recommend getting a UE Boom. This one right here. This thing is magic. The sound that comes out of a UE boom is unlike any other speaker. And you put that in your room, it sounds like you've got like several thousand dollars worth of audio equipment. Yet this thing only costs like 160 bucks. Maybe you give it secondhand ones cheaper. Amazing. Anyway, straight tactics here. And so I'm just giving you an example of the principle of letting her breathe. Letting her breathe is both a principle and an actual tactical execution, which I'll tell you a story of just in one second. But I just want to tag out the principle here, which is that you now need to just get her into a space where it's one-on-one. -on -one. Just one-on-one, -on -one, let's see if she can let go of herself first. Now, first, because of what I said before, you could you go to sex? Could Mr. B go to sexual intercourse and sexual penetration with this girl with by skipping this step of, let's see if she can breathe. Let's see, and that's in the metaphorical sense of, let's see if she can let go of herself. Let's see if we can dive 10 leagues deep and get a girl to just rely solely on me to be her oxygen. And what is that? She's going to fit my frame. She's going to come into my frame and fully let go of herself because she can't. A girl can't. And this is why, because could he, I said before, could he skip this step and have sex with her? Yes. But why? Why would you want to? I know for the uninitiated, I know for the uneducated, it doesn't make sense because it's like, well, I thought sex was the be all end all. I thought sex was, the, the physical penetration was it. And I'm like, well, I, I'm sorry, my friend. I'm sorry. But what you soon realize is that once you sleep with a few different girls, what you realize is that actually sex is really not that fun if it's lacking the component of selflessness, of having let go of each other. And that now oh, we can reach true orgasm because um, orgasm never happens without it. Orgasm never happens, not a true a uh, full body orgasm and a true out of body experience does not happen. And you cannot get a girl to squirt as well. You cannot get a girl to have her feminine ejaculation, both in a physical and also emotional sense as well, uh, without having her let go of herself. I found, I had to find this out the hard way. I used to struggle with this in the beginning. And like, for some reason, I just can't get these girls to, uh, to both in an emotional, but also physical sense, uh, ejaculate. I couldn't get them to reach that point of orgasm. And what I found through and through my experience is that I was skipping this step. I was skipping the step of letting of giving her time to let go of herself. All right. So that's why oftentimes when I'm in that physical and sexual es escalated space for the first hour, all of my focus and all of my attention is on her. I don't really want her to quote unquote touch me. Like I don't I don't need her. I don't need her to to uh, pleasure me for that first hour for that first hour that we're in that emotional space it always begins with breathing for me however when we do get beyond breathing which is this, uh, that story i want to tell you it's covered it's covered that first hour is me pleasuring her and me allowing her and unlocking her and showing her that i can be her oxygen let go baby let go because i will be your oxygen here you don't need to try and breathe on your own anymore you don't need to be someone that you're not. You don't need to bring an extra source, an extra tank of oxygen. It's not necessary. I can show you here through my frame, through my masculine leading. I can show you that I will take care of everything. <coughs> so you can do this with in a more musical sense of having the beats play and then just have your arm around her. Have your arm around her and just allow her to just lie on your chest. Allow her to have her, you take her head, you take her head, you rest it on her chest and you just have your arm and it's really weird because I'm covering my ear, but that's what you'll do. For those of you that are like listening to the podcast, a lot of this might not make sense unless you go watch the YouTube, so please do, right? 
you've got, imagine you're lying down on the bed and you've got her lying in your arms. You just rest her head on your chest and literally just have her listen to your heartbeat, right? While the music's playing, do this, do this. And naturally what you will find that with even the most shy, with the most timid girls, with the girls that have in the most negative of spaces, like what I was talking about before with that girl who had bombed her exam, what you'll find is that if you give her enough time, eight out of the 10 girls given enough time will let go of themselves. Otherwise, you would not be here on this day three because she would have had to have shown you on the day two that she was somewhat willing to let go of herself. Now, for those, some girls are fine to let go on a day two, but when they get into that sexual emotional space, what about then, Adam? Adam, what about them when she's not, when she, maybe she does come in negative or maybe she does start to show signs of being a little bit frigid. What if she doesn't, uh, what if she doesn't want to let go into to just lying on my chest and putting my head there. Listen, if a girl is not willing to lie down on the bed with me, fully clothed, just in my arm, right, then this is an outlier girl. Right? This is a girl who's got a lot of further further issues and that you're going to just have to backtrack it. You're just going to have to, okay, don't lose my shit. She's giving me a red light here. So just breathe. Just breathe. Give her more time throughout the night. See what happens. But for most girls, for most girls, you get her in that space. You have her head on your chest, allow her to just breathe with you, listen to the music. Or if you're more in that Zen vibe like I am, in which that I'm going to spoon of her and I'm just going to literally alter her heart rate, literally alter her breathing rate, which is now where we'll get into this story. But before we do, I just want to, because we are in a social q and I just want to address, I realize we are diving fucking deep here. It's fucking good. I love this topic. It's a full guide. I'm just going to dive into the chat and just address some of you guys. Just say hi. And for those of you that are in right now, if you're enjoying this content, please drop me a thumbs up down below. I really appreciate that. It helps get the uh, stream sent out to the rest of the community and uh, helps me know that you guys enjoyed this and drop your comments. Don't worry, we will get to your questions and Richie's already donated a super chat, so his will be first. I would say we're about 80% through, maybe 85% through this content, but it's it's worth, this is gonna be a longer session. We normally go for an hour and a half and we normally finish at 11.30. I will, uh, I'll see where we're at. I might extend it and see where we're at. But I just want to say hi to some of you guys since we're in this chat. So, <clears throat> Richard Jr. dropped his super chat question, which I'm going to address later on. Abel Martinez says, what up? Good to see you here, Abel. Good to see you. Uh, T says, Jeffrey has left the chat. Yeah, fucking Jeffrey. Uh, Rick Waters says, yes. Oh, Rick, what's good? Uh, Hall- uh, blip. Fuck, Halloween Fraser. What was your real name? What, wait, is it Ian? No. Yes? No. What was Halloween Fraser's real name? <coughs> so God, I made a big stink about getting his name. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. It's that long ago. Maybe if he gave me an hour, I might be able to remember it. But anyways, he, uh, uh, he's got some questions about LMR, night game pools. We'll get to that later. Great. Water, Nuke Water says, great stuff. Okay, yeah, that's all I want to do. I just want to dive in and... Uh, and uh, address some of these, uh, address you guys just being engaged. Now we're going to get into this fucking story. And I guess we'll wrap up the content part of this Q&A, <laughs> which we'll get to, uh, of this podcast with this story. I talked about physically altering a girl's heart rate and her breathing rate. She might even be watching this Q&A in post. I know she's probably working right now, but... Uh, I'm not going to mention her name I'm, it's because she's with someone right now. She's got a, she's got a partner that she's deeply in love with. And uh, we, we used to go back. And so this is going back, but I won't mention her name. And I'll just, I'll say, because she probably, she, no, nah, no, nah, she probably would She wouldn't be okay because I'm going to talk about some pretty sexual shit here. And uh, I'm sure her boyfriend would not appreciate that. So let me say this. Uh, I'm not even going to mention the first letter of her name. How about that? Let me just, just because I don't, I'll, I'll give her a fake name. I call her Jenna. I, all my fake names are Jenna, even though there is actually one girl that I've talked about, talk about before that is real Jenna, but she knows who she is. Anyways, I'm gonna call this girl Jenna. So there was this one night where day three, day three is a probably a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I'd be messaging her throughout the day for some reason for, for about logistics, something about logistics in terms of when we we're going to meet up again. And then I, all of a sudden I just realized, or I, it was earlier in the day, it was like probably 4, 3 p.m. 
and I was setting up for the day three, but I realized, hey, you know what, I got time tonight. Normally I don't. On the weeknights, normally I don't. Normally I've got way too much shit to do. But this night I had some, I had a bit of free time. It was a summer's night. And I said to her, hey, what are you up to tonight? And she's like, oh, with the family, you know, just having dinner with the family. I'm like, it's okay. What's your address? I'll come by. I'll stop by 8, 9 p.m. I've got to deal with a client before, but I'll stop by like 8, 9 p.m. She sends me her address and I'm like, okay, so the membership for impromptu. Impromptu. I like to do a lot of these day threes impromptu. And so I drive over to her place. I actually, I actually do my coaching session on the way over there. It was quite a drive. It was like an hour's drive away from my place. So I was able to do a full coaching session while driving. And, uh, and so I rock up to her place. It's about 8 p.m. It's about 8 p.m. I, I rock up. Her family's there. Whole family's there. She's, oh, yeah, no, no, I can mention. Yeah, okay, so let's just say she's got a few siblings, younger siblings, and she's got a uh, mom and dad. Mom and dad, there, a few younger siblings. And so, you know, I say hi to the family. I haven't met the family before. Uh, I was, I assumed there would be some family. I didn't know to what extent or what they were like. I hadn't met them before, that's for sure. But I assumed there would be some family. And uh, so I don't, I'm cool with this. I like families, but you know, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna try have dinner with them. But you know, it's it's fine. I'm, I'm gonna introduce myself. So introduce myself. I'm actually I'm really good with moms and dads in particular, and because uh, I give a shit, <laughs> I give a shit. I actually want to know about them. But because we're here on a day three, I'm not gonna try and get too friendly with them. It's more about her and I. So uh, she introduces me to the family. They're all in the living room. Uh, the younger siblings are quite a bit younger. They're like. Uh, I think there's like three and five. I'm trying to be aloof, trying to be aloof with the details, but they're younger. And you know, say hi and we meet them all and that's cool. And I'm just there in the living room and we're just kind of uh, chilling. We're just chilling, the, chilling with the family in this living room. Now, at a certain point, her parents get the message. Like they get the idea that, of what's going on here. So, and because she's like pretty, uh, pretty uh, touchy with me. Like she's like very playful with me and try to, um, fuck around me a little bit and try and take my jump, try and I've got like, not this jumper, but I've got like one of my oversized jumpers that she wants to wear, but I'm giving her a stick and saying, no, you don't get to fucking wear this jumper, it's my jumper. And, uh, and so anyways, they get the message. And so they say, Hey, come on kids, time for bed. As the younger kids. So they take the younger kids, uh, out to the other end of the house. It's quite a big house. And so it's just her and I now. And, and what we do, and so we hop up on the couch, and it's just her and I. Remember, at this stage, we've only we've only made out for uh, just on the day two, but you know, pretty didn't overcook it. Principles: we don't overcook it because I know I wasn't going to able to close the deal with her and take her deeper and uh, let her breathe the full segment, the full way through on the day two. So you know, we're we're on the couch, next to each other, we're breathing, and I realize, well, we're here on the day three. <clears throat> so at this stage, and I'm not consciously processing this, but I know my system, which is that well. I want, I want to see if she can let go. <clears throat> so I take her down. You got to imagine like a really big, like a huge kind of leather couch. I take her down. I'm like, hey, just give me your hands. I give her my hands. You're kind of like side by side as if like you were watching a movie with the TV in front. I'm like, give me your hands. And I kind of move in to face her. She takes her hands. I'm like, okay, she's pretty comfortable with this. And I just kind of gesture her to get up to get up just like kind of slightly just so I could make room for myself to slide in for that spoon position. So she kind of gets up off the couch. I slide her down, holding her hands and I just uh, pull her in and she gets it. She's like, okay, we're going to spoon him. So she gets down, she spoons him with me. And all I do here is <clears throat> pull her in real tight and I'm just hugging, just full bear hug, full spoon. I start to listen to her breathing. I start to feel that heart rate. She's going like a jackhammer. Her heart rate is beating so damn fast. And this girl's in a great mood, by the way. She's in a, she's not in a negative space at all. She's not like uh, jacked up from other things. Her heart is just going purely because of this situation. Like we haven't had sex before. There's a lot of tension here, a lot of sexual tension here. And uh, she knows what's going on here. And so I'm just, I'm there lying down and I close my eyes this whole time. And you can imagine we're body to body and spooning position and I'm feeling her heart rate through her chest through the back of her through her back really and it's just going so fast and all I say to her I just whisper in her ear I'm just like just breathe just breathe now I normally don't verbalize it only in extreme scenarios 
<clears throat> only when a girl is like quite noticeably anxious, like very nervous. And she wasn't a virgin. She wasn't a virgin at the time. She was a younger girl, like probably about three or four years younger than me at the time. But I'm, I'm a, I'm, she definitely wasn't a virgin. But it's just something new for her. Pro I was probably the first guy, though, that I ever cold approached her and taken her through this through cold approach. So that's probably where a lot of it's coming from. But she's jackhammering on the heart. So I just like whisper in her ear, just, hey, just, it's okay, just breathe. And that's all I said to her for the next hour. Oh, no, no, it wasn't an hour. It's about 20 minutes. Uh, so we were there. And I just noticed over the next 20 minutes or so, every now and again, she'd say to me, are you still breathing? <laughs> she'd say this, are you still breathing? And I'm like, yeah. It's just that my my breathing rate is, I don't say this to her, but what I'm thinking in my mind is that my breathing rate is so much slower than hers that she almost thinks I've stopped breathing. So in the time it takes me to go, That's one breath, right? That's one inhale and one exhale. She's probably taking maybe five, five or six inhale and exhales. So to her, it's like, are you still breathing? And she actually like said that to me. She's like, she's like, she's like wow, this is something I've never experienced before. And all my intention is here is to get her somewhere close, maybe 80 to 90% close to that five second inhale and five second exhale. If I can get her there, that's all I want from this day three experience. And I know what happens after that as well. Because I don't want to... Listen, she's ready to have sex right now. She's ready for me to start taking her clothes off. And, you know, we could easily have sex in this spooning position. Absolutely. But I don't want to. I don't want to. Why? Because if her heart is beating that fast, if, if her breathing, if she is taking five inhale and exhales in the time it takes me to do one, there is such a misalignment of sexual energy right here. Just because she's nervous. Just because the girl in front of me. So instead of being the 18 to 19 year old Adam who brought his first ever girl home and skipped the Lion King and tried to have sex then and there and was so rushed and couldn't get an erection because he was so putting so much fucking pressure on this. Instead of that, fast forward through the experience of this journey now, ah, oh, there is no fucking rush. Let me give her time to breathe. So it's not only a metaphorical sense that what have I done here? And this is the story that we'll wrap up with. What have I done here? I told you before. I told you, we talked about it before in the principles of let her breathe, both on the principle-based sense, the metaphorical sense of which that, listen, girl, I'm your oxygen now. I am going to take you 10 leagues deep and I need you to let go of yourself. And it's okay. It's okay that we are going to spend as much time as it takes. We don't need to talk. Shut up, please. Please shut up. I'm going to shut up. I don't need to talk. You don't need to talk. We're going to lie here on this couch and we're just going to breathe together. And we're just going to be. We are just going to be. If, if I want to see if you can let go. Because if you can let go, we are going to have a sexual experience. Thousand X. Ten thousand X to anything that would, that would be if we tried to do this beforehand. So let's just see if you can do this for me. And the most attractive thing a, a woman can do for me and that I can do for a woman is to let go of ourselves. It is the most attractive thing you can do. I said before, the thing that stopped most girls from making me want to go on a day three with them is because they were not able to let go of themselves. So, but I have to provide that space and that is what all masculine beings must do. You must provide the space and show her that you can be that oxygen and you can allow her to let go of herself. So that's what I'm doing her though on the couch. Now, on a more physical sense now, when you dive deep below that ocean and you take her underneath, you take her under and you dive deep the way you're gonna do it, the way that I do this with her is that I'm gonna give her as much time as it takes to alter her heart rate. And what I noticed over the 20 minutes and of her breathing is that it started to come in sync with mine. Took her about 20 minutes though. Took her about 20 minutes. And by the way, during these 20 minutes, she was trying to take my hand and put it underneath her pants. She was trying to, she was, she was not only turning around every now and again to make out with me, but she was also trying to put my hand down there. She was trying to take, take my hand, put it underneath her shirt, right? Go up on that range, right? Get a squeeze here and there. She's trying to do all these things. She's like, she's trying to rush the sexuality. And I keep, I keep saying to her, no, 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 breathe, breathe, right? And over 20 minutes or so, because every time she would do that, every time she would try and get me to, to feel her there or feel her there, I would notice she'd get fucking heart rate, heart rate, heart rate, heart rate, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, no, no, not yet. 
not yet. And every day I say to her, not yet. Not yet, just breathe. Just a couple words every now and again. And then over 20 minutes or so, she finally got it. She finally got it. And she was able to just literally lie there in my arms, chest to chest, sorry, chest to back, body to body, right? And I truly felt that her concept of self had left. Her idea of herself had left. And now she was breathing in sync with me, heartbeat in sync with me. And you can feel it. You can feel it. You can only feel it though, if that you let go of yourself, which is why the meditation, which is why living a life that is fully mindful and tapped into this present moment at all times, right? And not engaging in useless bullshit and in the social media and do, 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 like this, trying to distract yourself at all times. No, fucking drinking the water. And when you drink the water, you truly drink the water. This is all these things is what allows you to get into a space with a woman and to be there and to really let go of your sense of self. And then this is where magic kicks in. And now when the 20 minutes, when it's about 20 minutes or so passes by, and the only real way I know that is because there's a huge clock in the living room that's like staring in front of us up on the wall. And so every now I just kind of notice is roughly around this time that, oh, she truly let go of herself and all her muscular tension was just like jelly, right? Her, her heart rate's like jelly, her breathing's like jelly, and it's just in sync with mine. And now I say, well, I don't say anything. Now I kiss her on the back of the neck. And that just tells her that it's time now. You just give her that little kiss on the back of the neck. Because what have I done the previous 20 minutes? I've actually taken my hand away, right, from below the south. I've taken my hand away from her chest and actually just kept it around her waist. You know, every time she tried to get me to get physically sexual with her, I stopped her and I said, no, 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 yeah. But now, or she senses from a masculine, a little kiss on the back of the neck. Now she knows to turn into me on her own volition, turns into me. And now we start to make out and now we're going to sex. Whew. Yes, sir. That's <laughs> just, now this, I get, that's just one of many, many stories. Now the, the emotion, what the, now, by the way, also for the, just, just to wrap that up there for a second. Yeah. There was the orgasm almost happened before that, but of course, true physical, escal- physical orgasm was achieved hundred percent. But it can only be achieved when you allow the girl to let go of herself, which is why on day three, I've talked about this both physically in a sexual space, but it's, it's very much more so emotional, right? The, the, unlock, the unlocking of a woman's psychological, emotional sexuality is far more important than getting her comfortable in a physical space or going into uh, physical penetration. Physical pen- Many girls will allow you to physically penetrate and to get to sexual physical escalation before they have emotionally let go. And you can do this, yet you will never achieve true orgasm. You will never get a girl to have a full body orgasm and to have an outer body experience and to, and to squirt and to allow her bodily juices to, to leave her, right? You will never get any of that if you do not unlock the emotional sexuality first, right? That's what it is. So why it's so important to do this. So I'm just going to now give you the full sum up on the day three. We'll now address the super chat questions. And I know we've gone for like an hour and 20 minutes some here. I will allow a little more time for Q&A, but of course, Richie's question comes first. And I've actually, I've got, a, I've got a post-it note here from a guy I mentioned at the beginning that I want to address. Just a quick thing in there as well. But just on the sum up here, day threes, my friends, day threes are two components. There are two components to it, and it can be summed up in one phrase. Take her deeper and let her breathe. Part one, take her deeper. Logistically, make sure this day three is always getting into a deeper space. That yes, it can start in public. Yes, it can start at the tapas bar. Yes, it can start at the beach at 6 p.m., 5 p.m. Yes, it can start at your friend's big birthday bash if that's what you want. But it must very quickly lead into a more logistical, deeper space where part two can happen. Where now, if that was taking her out, a few kilometers into the ocean, taking her from the beach shoreline into a few kilometers into the ocean. That's part one. Then part two is now diving deep, going in leagues deep and asking her to let go of herself, which is now in that deeply emotional space, that isolated space. Can you get her to let go of herself? Do this first. Do this first before you, even when she tries to take your clothes off, even when she tries to put your hand down her pants, even when she tries to put her hand up up her shirt, don't let it happen. You will trust me. 
Don't let it happen. Give her 20 minutes. Give her half an hour. For some girls, give her a whole night to just allow that heart rate and that breathing rate to come in sync. You can achieve that in many ways, as I've said, whether it is through the green tea and chill, whether it is through the R&B music playlist, the Panda Emperor, whether it is through playing music for her and allowing her to relax into that, whether it is giving her a massage, whether it is... Uh, what it, there's so many things. There's so many. Just get creative with it. For me, it is simply spooning with a girl. Allow her heart and her breathing to come in sync with mine. When that is in sync, let's go. That's when it's let go for me. And it's just, it's such a system. It's such a thing where it's like, no more guessing. No more fucking having to be in the bedroom of a girl going, now, fucking now, what, red, 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 hot, hot. Hey, <laughs> that I fucking love her. She's just like got you know, this 1950s like, or you're this 1800s like cowboy. It's just like slinging guns, trying to work out which one is it. None of that shit anymore. Now it's just okay. There's there's an ocean here. There's a way of doing this. In which that girl come with me, take me. I'm gonna be your oxygen now. I'm gonna dive deep with you, and it's the same thing every time, and it works every fucking time. Just like with the day twos. Just like with how to kiss the girl. There is a if you go back to Social Q&A Live 12 or 11, I think it was, How to Kiss the Girl, there is a routine and a practice for kissing a girl that is fail-safe if you follow those principles. Same thing here. So, my friends, that is day three in a wrap shell. And uh, yes, we will now dive into the Q&A section of this. But because it's a full guide, we, of course, I have to give this the real love. Of course, we have to go full deep. But I'll now get into your questions. And I'll listen, because it's already 11.26 a.m. and I finish at 11.30 normally, I will, do, I will extend this. I may, I knew today was going to be a full guide, so I made sure to push my commitments further on in the day so we could go deeper here. So for those of you that are in the live stream right now, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box. I'm going to address the super chats first, of course, because that goes straight back to the channel. I'm so grateful. And uh, and yeah, I'll do, I'll, uh, those donations are so greatly appreciated, so I'll give that the real context. And I'll see how many questions I can get to after that. But, uh, fuck, what a time, what a time. Guys, yeah, I could go all day on this, but it's just, it's a truly beautiful thing when you allow a girl to let go of her sense of self first before physically penetrating. And of course, it's predicated on you being able to do that yourself. So that's why the daily and nightly meditations. That's why meditating every single day. And uh, by the way, meditation is a very loose word. It doesn't necessarily mean sitting, sitting down cross-legged and rehearsing a... Uh, a, 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 I was going to say chantra, <laughs> a, a, a chant, chanting, and a, a rehearsing a mantra. You know, there's many ways of meditating. So uh, I've got many, I've got much content on that as well. Just go to my channel, uh, type into the channel in the little uh, search bar, uh, meditation guides. I've got two of them, I believe. One of them is uh, a how to beginner's guide for meditation. Search that shit up. So here we go. I will now address the first question. Let's go. Uh, shout out to Richie Jr. Richie Jr. who donated a five pound, five pounds, which because our Australian dollar fucking sucks right now. Australian dollar is so weak. That is actually probably about nine dollars Australian, probably. Uh, so something like that. But it's thank, uh, thank you so much, Richie. I really appreciate it. He comes in with his question saying, super chat question. Hi, Adam. Hope you are well. Sure am. Uh, in response to your herpes question. Whoop. In response to your herpes question, how often should you get tested? I've never been tested before. I feel physically and mentally great. Ooh, that's left field. Uh, he goes on to say, but I know some of the girls have been more sexualized than your average girl was just wanting your opinion on it. Cheers. Richie, hmm. how often should you get tested? Let me just bang that out. Uh, it's very much just relevant to how, how fre what, your frequency. How, how often are you frequenting uh, such girls, because if you are if you are prom predominantly doing meeting girls in the day, and you are predominantly meeting girls that have only been with maybe one or two guys in their lives, you probably don't need to get tested that often. Maybe once a quarter, right? Maybe four times a year. If you have, if you're only seeing girls that have only been with one or two guys, and when they were with those one or two guys. They were locked, closed and locked relationships. You know, I talk about closed and locked or open and free. If they were closed and locked, serious monogamous relationships, that they've only been with one or two guys, 
right? Then you probably need to get tested maybe once a quarter, you know, once every three months, you know, and that's probably being overly cautious as well. Uh, however, more to your second part of your question when you said, what if you're frequenting girls that are more sexualized? That's that's the real thing. If you're doing more night, you're meeting girls at night and you're getting, and listen, typically the girls that you're bringing home uh, from, if you're doing a lot of one night, particularly one night stands, you're doing one night stands of girls at night. Let's say you're out on that Friday, listen, Halloween just went by. There were some biddies getting around on Halloween. It's just like a, it's like, it's like a, a slut free card. <laughs> I don't even like that term because I think, you know, girls should be able to dress however they want any. I have no problem with girls uh, dressing down anytime, anywhere. And that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, like a girl should not be labeled a slut because she likes to express her feminine sexuality. I don't like that term slut. It's, 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 it's too, it's, it doesn't make sense. But anyways... Is there any ways that's a time a discussion for a different time? But to his question, if you're getting on a lot of one night stands, you're bringing girls back uh, from girl from the clubs uh, on Friday and Saturday night. Listen, those types of girls who are able to let go that quickly, typically, def generally, I can't say definitely, but typically and generally speaking, have far more sexual experience. They probably slept with maybe three or four guys that month. Right, and they're not the type of guys that are only seeing one girl that 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 week either. Oh, sorry, sorry, only one girl their life either. You know, they 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 mingling, they 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 are they getting their their goose loose quite frequently. So in that case, I would say once a month. I would say once a month, especially, and that's preemptive. That's not if you know you have something. This is just preemptive. Once a month. So and. You, you can't get tested too often, really. It's it's really best. Listen, some of my mates, Richie, some of my mates, you sleep with three, four different girls a week, like new girls, and and they get and they get tested. Uh, I've had clients that get tested once every week. I've had some clients that get tested once every week because they literally sleep with like three or four different people uh, a week, and they're having some pretty rough sex where there's a bit of blood getting around. And uh, I know some I know some guys like that. And they're getting tested. The, one of the most frequent I've seen is once a week, okay? And that person was sleeping with about three or four different people a week, okay? Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. And, and you know, to the point where I, was, oh, I always saw him with a fucking... He always had... He's like getting blood tests everywhere. He's always had a... Uh, always had the, uh, the circular Band-Aid on with a little cotton bud. And so I would say for you, just just know. Just, just, just know who you see, all right? If you have a type of bird, you've seen a lot of girls that are of this nature, that are getting their goose loose quite frequently, then for sure get out. But it depends how many girls you see. Like once a month is good. Once a month is good. But if you're seeing any more than, let's say that if you're seeing a new girl a week, so you saw four new girls a week, I'll probably get tested once that month. So for four different girls that week, and they came from more of a one nightish stand vibe, and they weren't the type of girls that have only been with one or two guys their lives, but they've probably been seeing a few different other guys themselves. Also, backpackers, hostel girls, girls that are traveling the world. Yeah, get tested a little more frequently, for sure. If you feel physically and mentally great, that's that's true. But there are a lot of sexual diseases that do not present symptoms. Which one is that? Is that chlamydia? I think chlamydia is one of those. Gonorrhea as well, maybe? I, I know, yeah. There's a, there's a few. There's a few... That have, uh, yes, and there are several types of sexual diseases uh, that, that like, like uh, not just herpes, but there's a few that do some types of sexual diseases that have the same name, like gonorrhea or chlamydia, uh, do present physical signs, but some don't as well. There are some that don't present. So, yeah, you just for peace of mind, for sure. Interesting question, though. And, Richie, I thank you so much for donating uh, that super chat, which is why I dive more deep and give you more context. And that goes straight back to the channel. So I'm really grateful. And I hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're doing well over in Europe, wherever you may be. Um, what, you from Scotland, yeah? You're Scottish? I think so. Could be wrong. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so now I'll dive into a couple more questions here. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. What's going on here? 
Jose Pablo Fuentes Soles has just donated a $50 MX. I don't know what MX is. My first guess is Mexican. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but let me just fucking... What currency is MX? I would say... Yeah, okay. MX is the Mexican peso. I did not know that. I've never been to Mexico. I've never been to the Mekishko. I don't know. So, but hang on a second. Hang on a second. $50? Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Now, did you put a question? Where's your question? Jose, I do not see a question there. Okay, yeah, he says it's Mexican pesos. So that is uh, now taking the record for the largest super chat I've ever received through the YouTube, I've, uh, through the website. I've received larger donations through the website on Bordeaux Podcast, but that's different. This is a live session right here. And uh, Jose has definitely donated before, but I just, uh, what can I say? What can I say, my man? That, that goes straight back to the channel. Of course, like, just like whether you donated 50 cents or you donate nothing at all. I just uh, truly appreciate you being here. But the fact that you've invested that much of your uh, hard-earned dollars, uh, I want to do absolutely everything I can in this time to answer absolutely anything that you have, provide any insight that I can. I will dive as deep as possible uh, for you. And I just want to let you know that, yeah, you, you don't really know what that means. Not, not so much from the, the financial standpoint, but more from the um, emotional standpoint of what that means to me. Of course, absolutely appreciate the financial, but it's it's more the emotional. Like, you know, that could be any. You didn't have to do that, and I'll be here for you anyway. I'll hundred percent be here for you anyway. And just the fact that you are uh, willing to do that, uh, I really appreciate it. So, Hontoni, arigato gozaimashita, kanshi shita. I am super grateful, and I'm I'm here for you now. So, whatever you need from me, please let me know. You still have not dropped a question. I do not see your question. Maybe I need to go back upwards in the chat. No, I still don't see it. So, Jose, uh, to, in order to keep this session running, please, please drop me a question because it's not. I'm gonna have to. I'll go back to other questions, but the moment, the moment you drop your thing, I'll keep my eye on it. I'll keep my eye on the chat. The moment you drop your question, uh, I will cut whatever I'm saying at the time. I'll go straight to you because you might be typing it right now. But otherwise, just please put it in. Please. <laughs> because I feel like I feel like I'm really, like that's incredible. It's insane. So until then, until then, until uh, Jose drops his uh, time, I'll go back up into the questions and I'll uh, give him some time to put whatever he's going to say there. Otherwise, if you don't have a question, just let me know. But I'm pretty sure you have a question, so just let me know. Um, now moving on, or just going back up. Uh, uh, Halloween prankster. I think he's. Hey on. I can't remember Halloween's name. I think it was Ian. For some reason, I think it's Ian. I could be wrong, though. Okay, so his question says, uh, Hi, bro. How do you get over the LMR, especially in night game pulls? I don't have trouble pulling, but they show strong LMR after we get home. They get the impression that I'm boyfriend material and they want to take it slow, but never end up connecting after that night. Thanks, Uh Okay, so I'm just thinking that I definitely have a lot of content on this. I'm just trying to think if there is actually, I just, because I'm pretty sure I have a full podcast on this. Let me just, um, because uh, I don't think I would have titled it LMR. No, I do. I have, I have a podcast called BDP31 called How to Overcome Her Last Minute Resistance in 2017 however that's quite old that's two years getting on now and i've definitely evolved my thought process on this and i just i just remember recently going into this topic going into this topic really recently in a podcast and how i don't perceive it as lot as lmr anymore like that's a gamey term and i've uh and i'll use it to relate with you guys but I don't perceive that. It's really just, it's it's green light and red lights for me. And it's really just reading the girl in front of you. So to the question of Halloween Prankster, when he says, you know, when he's got a girl coming home from night, they're showing strong last minute resistance as in they are uncomfortable with the situation. And uh, they get the impression of both from material and they want to take it slow, but never want to catch you at night. So listen, I can give you, because there's not a lot of context there. And I really want to give my time to uh, Jose. Well, hold on. Okay, boom. I'm going to cut that question there because Jose has finally come in with his uh, question here and he donated that $50 uh, super chat. 
So I'm going to give him, like I said before, I'm going to cut that question. Halloween, I'll come back to you after, depending on how much time we have. But this, of course, uh, gets the, uh, the time of day. So let's get ready here. Jose Pablo Fuentes Soles with the $50 Mexican peso comes in and says, Anyway, I have a question. How to deal with a cold girl on second date? Hold on, this is almost the second. This is almost Halloween practice, or not quite. It's it's a similar line, though, isn't it? How about that? So hold on, let me get his real question. I have a question. How to deal with a cold girl on a second date? I had a second date with a girl, aka the day three. Yes, yes, with the day three. Uh, on a second date with a girl, and we got some vibe. But every time I was going physical or sexual, she took some space. I gave plenty of space and didn't care that, in quotes, I didn't get any, in quotes, through the night. I didn't go as sexual as I wished since the beginning. Yeah, so this, this is incredible. That Jose's question is actually of the same species of the question I was literally just about to answer from Halloween Prankster, NKA Ian, if that is your name. Uh, of course, I'll just go now with the context of Jose's, because Jose's is much better context, and of course, of the Super Chat as well. Uh... So, if you go to go, because what he's talking about there is when Halloween was talking about last minute resistance, which I don't really view it as anymore, but really it's just a question of, is she comfortable, is she uncomfortable? And when Jose is saying here that he's on a day three with the girl, he's getting some vibe, but every time he makes a physical move or a sexual move, uh, she spaces herself, she distances herself. I really feel like I've covered this in a really formative piece of content, but I just can't remember what it is. So I will, but of course I'm going to cover it here anyway. He says that he gave her plenty of space. He didn't care that he didn't get any throughout the night. And he didn't go as sexual. So the way that you deal, first of all, because your question here is, how do I deal with this type of girl who's not comfortable? Well, you did the right thing first, Jose, which is that you give her space. When you're... When you're reading, oh yes, I think this is what it is. The social q and I did on how to read body language. I might have tapped on this. I think that's what my mind was going to. But anyways, it's all about reading her level of comfortability. Is she comfortable? Is she uncomfortable? If you read a girl is comfortable, uncomfortable. And actually, Jose, I'm not sure how long you've been in this social Q&A before. But I've actually already answered a lot of your question in this Q&A. So... I'm just going to tie up the pieces that have not been answered. But if you have not listened to this entire Q&A, I would recommend going back because the part of breathing with her is going to be part of my tactical answer to you. But first part, you've already kind of nailed it by giving her space. If you go to make a sexual play, so let's take, for example, of what I was talking about that girl before, or let's say you're spooning with that girl and you're breathing with her and her breathing has come into line, her heart rate has come into line with you, and you go to kiss her on the neck, but she freezes up. Or you get her to turn into you. Oh, Jose just says, sorry, he just got in. And that's okay, Jose, because I'm going to give you some real tactical, more specific stuff here anyway. Let's say that you do start to, uh, you, do, you do move her hand down. You do start to take her pants off. You do start to unbutton her shirt, et cetera, et cetera. And, and she freezes up. Or you go to kiss her and she freezes up. The first thing you do is that you recognize this and whoop, pull back. Right? The biggest mistake you can make, Jose, in this is actually not what you would think it would be. The biggest mistake you would think is trying to push through and try to force yourself on that girl. Now, of course, that's rape, right? So no, we do not do that. But it's actually not the biggest mistake because that's not most guys. Most guys are respectful of women, right? Most guys are not looking to be there in a sexual space with a girl receive the signal that she's uncomfortable for sexual escalation and keep going anyway. That's not most guys. It's definitely not my followers for sure, if you've been watching my content. But it's not most guys. Right? Most guys are socially savvy enough to know that when a girl freezes up, locks up, doesn't want to kiss, moves her hand out away from her sexual spaces, right, her, more, uh, her more endorphin-rich nerve spaces, that most people would read that and go, oh, okay. So the biggest mistake for most guys is actually that they completely give up. And I've spoken about this before, Jose. Most guys completely give up. They wave the white flag. The moment they get a, a red light from a girl, which is that I'm not comfortable right now, 
is that they stop all leading, they wave the white flag, they get pissy, they get pissy about it, and they go, fuck it, it didn't work, it didn't work, so fuck me, and I'm, well, this is not gonna happen, so fuck this girl, this girl's just not the right girl, this girl, this girl's too frigid, this girl's too cold, right, and it's too much work, and it's not gonna work, it's just not gonna work, right, that's most guys, that's the biggest mistake they make, whereas what I would recommend is what you do in this space, is that when you recognize a girl is giving you a red light, which is that she freezes up, her body language gets tight, her breathing gets tight, hurry gets tight, won't kiss, uh, is not comfortable with any of this, whatever, anything you're doing, she's just not comfortable, red signal, red light, back it up and breathe, give her time, I mentioned this before earlier, give it time, there is no rush, there is no rush, okay, a girl that's at the beginning of the principle I talked about here on a day three, which is when you're starting to let her breathe, when you're in that sexual space of her letting her breathe, whether it be listening to music with her, whether it be breathing, literally breathing with her and spooning with her, whether drinking the green tea with her, massaging with her, whatever it is, anytime you sense her get uncomfortable, there's no rush, right? We can always, and this is the principle is that, Jose, you can always go back to the previous level of comfortability because, Jose, you should always be deepening. In that visualization, which you weren't there for, but you'll need to go back and listen to, which I highly recommend, is that in the visualization of where, when you started this, this intimate space with this girl, you were, you were just treading water. You were treading water and you both had your heads above water. And now you've asked her to come into me. Take her hand. I've asked, I've asked her to come with me. And now I'm going to take you deep. And I'm going to ask you to, to let go. Let go of yourself and allow me to be your oxygen now because you won't breathe as I start to take you deeper. If you try to breathe and try to bring another oxygen tank and try to do too much and try to be more and try, and try to just to interject and to object with all these ideas of anxiety and nerves and and just ideas like thought essentially in order for us to dive deeper into this ocean and go 10 leagues deep go 10 kilometers deep down into the depths of this of this body of water the presence of now the only way that you can breathe is that if you allow me to breathe for you which is allowing me to let go of yourself allowing me to provide the space in which you can let go of yourself that's the only way that you can breathe now, if at any point during that dive, that girl starts to get shaky and she starts to get shaky and she won't fully let go and you've got to come up, well, what was the previous level of comfortability? Back up. She was, always, she was comfortable to tread water. Bring it down to tactics now, Jose. If you're there on the bed with the girl and she starts to, oh, she's not comfortable with you putting her hand down her pants. She's not comfortable with you unbuttoning. She she's got some tight denim jeans on. She's not comfortable with you taking the belt. She's got a belt on or uncomfortable taking that first button off or, t- or unzipping, right? She's not comfortable with that. Well, what was the previous level of comfortability? You wouldn't, you've got to just track back, reverse engineer. In order to get to that stage, I highly doubt you went to unbuttoning her jeans from... Hey, like just here's your green tea. Here's your fucking green tea. Or, is or you just press play on that seven days, Craig David. There's you gotta have some level of comfortability leading up to that, so you can always track back. This is why I say there's no need to give up. There's no need to wave the white flag. You sh- certainly should not be pressing forward when a girl gives you a red light. That is uh, sexual harassment for sure. But in this scenario, Jose. Yes, you gave her a space. That's fantastic. And, but what's more damaging, and this is what I've always tried to give to guys, it is more damaging to a girl that you give up entirely when she shows her level of comfortability. It's more damaging. It's more damaging. Why? Because she goes, well, I didn't want him to stop altogether. It's just that I wasn't quite ready for that yet. And so what? I, so what, we can't be in a physical, sexual, emotional space together if I'm not willing for you to, to put your hand down my pants, right? That, it's, you, you're sending so many wrong signals to her. You're sending the signal that, well, you needed this. You needed the sex. You had attachment to the sex. You had attachment to being validated in this way for whatever fucking reason. And you're just, you're, 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 
you're sending signals to her that you were not able to read her in that moment. Because most girls, when they give you a red light, it's only a red light based on that move, based on whether you tried to put, her hand, put your hand on her nipple, when you tried to put her hand down her pants, when you tried to unbutton those jeans, right? So just backtrack. What was the previous level of comfortability? Oh, if you guys were just spooning together or you just had her lying on your chest and she was just breathing with you there, track back. It's okay. It's okay. And that's all she wants from you. All a girl wants when she's not comfortable is to know that I can communicate to him I'm not comfortable and not have him freak out and not have him blow his load, either in the way of over-aggressive or under-aggressive. There's very few guys that are over-aggressive because those are the guys that will find themselves in jail very quickly. But the guys that are under-aggressive, that is Mr. Nice Guy 101, which is that, okay, you tried to, it, it took all of you to unbutton her jeans or to make that move, and then and then she took your, your hand away and she goes, oh, no, not yet, not ready yet. And then so what, you stop, you lose your shit, you lose your centering, you lose your grounding, and you never make another play. You don't go to kiss her again. You don't. YouTube just told me that we're not receiving this. Uh, no data? What are you talking about? Hold on. Hold on. Are we back? YouTube just told me that we're... That I was, it was receiving no data. If you guys are still in this stream, could you please let me know if this is working? I think we're back. I think we're back. I don't know how long that dropped out for. So you might have to watch the replay for this. I think that probably dropped out for a little bit though because I wasn't with it. It says we're back. It says the stream's in. Could I please get a comment from one of you guys? Okay, Jose says we're back. Guys, I have no idea how long that just dropped out. I don't remember. So I, I can't. There's no way of me telling. But the good thing about this is that it's still recording on my end. So don't worry. The replay, the replay will be here. Yeah. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to make a time mark of this. Oh, Schemo says it only dropped out for like five seconds. So the internet's been really bad here because they're working on the MBN uh, in my street, which is like the new national broadband fucking thing. It's supposed to be coming out for years, but it's finally in. So, okay. Thank you so much, Schemo, for saying it only dropped out for five seconds because that means I won't have to... If it like dropped out for like 10 minutes because I just went through some absolute gold in terms of tactics... Uh, I was going to potentially re-upload this. So, okay. It seems like we're okay. So, I'll pick up. I'll pick up where we left off. Really appreciate it, guys. So, where the fuck was I there? Oh, retracting. Yeah, just going back to the previous level of comfortability. Um, it got derailed there. But the girls... I'm just trying to think of what was the last thing I said. Anyways, recapping here. If you can do that, you, oh, all night. That's what I was saying. All night. You can lead a girl all night through sexual escalation and the dance of sexual connection between the masculine and feminine in which that she can repeatedly tell you and communicate to you, I'm not comfortable. I'm not ready. And you can manage that. You can be comfortable with that. There are many a night, many a night where you need to spend five, six, seven hours of a girl from 8 p.m. until 1 a.m. with this girl where just move by move, just little escalation by little escalation you know just she's lying there she's happy to be on your chest you go to kiss her oh i'm not quite ready with the kiss yet that's okay relax what was she previously comfortable with oh just lying on my chest give her 10 minutes of that maybe i try again she seems more comfortable now go to kiss her okay she is comfortable now she is comfortable to kiss that's cool next level okay give her some more time with that and now start to unbutton her shirt oh i'm not quite comfortable with that okay retract what was the previous level of comfortability she was comfortable to kiss before okay, i'll go back to with that Right? It's just a process of reading the girl in front of you, Jose, and that you can always go back to your previous level of comfortability. That is the number one thing to deal with this uh, this pickup lingo of LMR, which this nails two birds. It's, it's second each other. This is two birds, one stone, which is uh, tackling Halloween pranksters, which is that guys that, that receive a lot of, in the pickup terms, LMR, right? Just last minute resistance. Which, to, the reason why I don't use that term is because it's not actually accurate. There is no last minute resistance. There is no girl that, that on a, when you brought her back to your place and that, or if you're on a day three or if an initial interaction or whatever, that 
all of a sudden it's just green light, green light, green light, green light, green light, and then hard, hard red light, where it's like, okay, she's like making out with me, she's taking off my shirt, she's taking, it, she's, she's taking my pants off, right, and put in some more visual things as well, and then the moment, and then all of a sudden, you got to put your hand down her pants, goes, oh, fuck no, no, hell no, 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 it's not how it goes, right, the resistance that these guys are talking about more accurately is actually a staged process that they are perceiving it as a last minute resistance because they are not present in the moment with her. But if they were actually to read the girl in front of them, what they would note is that her level of uncomfortability is a gradual thing, right? Now, it's a gradual thing. It can just sometimes appear as a hard last minute because either they try to step outside themselves too quickly and they put far too much pressure on the girl, but often the time it's not the case. You have to be really uncalibrated to go from thinking that this girl is cool with a makeout and then all of a sudden put your hand down her pants, right? And her not being comfortable with that. Right? You have to be super uncalibrated, right? That's very... I'm just thinking there must be some guys because the term exists. So there must be some guys that think that's like normal. It's not normal though. It's not normal. Like it's not normal at all. You don't just like go from initiating a makeout to putting your hand down her pants immediately. It's not normal. So last minute resistance, that term, it's not accurate, which is why I don't use that term. I, I use the term to relate to you guys, but more accurately if a girl is uncomfortable with you, she will show this to you through stages. She will show this to you through progression of comfortability. And all you have to do is read this. So this is my thing, man. This is my thing, Jose, because you donated that $50 super chat, which is still flowing my fucking mind, which is that if you're in the dance with this girl, you're present in the moment, you will never get a hard red light. You should always be so attuned and present to the moment of her that the moment she shows you any level of uncomfortability, which will be yellows before reds, right? You shouldn't be making moves and stepping so far outside yourself that a girl has to give you last minute resistance to Halloween's part, but to you as well. You should not be doing things so out of the realm of what would be considered normal here that a girl has to go, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, fuck no, not this yet. Oh, no, 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 no not, not there. Nope, not ready for that yet. No, you shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't make, so it doesn't make sense, which is like, why did that term even get exi exist? I think that for most guys, though, it's just that you're really, you're caught up in your nerves. You're caught up in your anxiety. You're not pacing it. And you're not reading her in front of you. Because if you truly do just breathe with a girl, and this is what I, and this is where I'll wrap it up for you, Jose, which is that you need to go back and watch this Q&A because I talked very tactically. It's at the very end of this session. It's probably about, an, probably somewhere between an hour and 10 to an hour and 30, where I talk about this one story of the girl on the couch with her friends, her family, and she she was trying to get me to physically escalate on her. She was trying to get me to put her, my hand down her pants, trying to get me to grab her tits, and I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it because I was reading her heart rate, I was reading her breathing, and she wasn't ready for it. She just thought, based on her previous experiences, this is what, or oh, this is what I should be doing with this guy because of the space we're in, right? And but I could tell how nervous she was, and she was not ready. So I kept breathing with her. I kept giving that time and that space. So my friend, give her the time and space. Let her breathe, which is the core, the second core component of a day three, which I went hard on this podcast for. And because you donated that super chat. That super, super chat. Uh, I just wanted to go really hard on it for you, man. But I'm just saying here that I'm, it's good to see that you've got your head switched on on giving her space. And that's excellent. And uh, it's great to see that you were devoid of attachment. And I even look at what Jose said here. He said, you know, I didn't care that I didn't get any through the night and didn't go as sexual. Now, the last thing I'll say there is just be careful that you don't underplay it. Because, listen, a girl just needs time. A girl just needs go it's it's a few and far between girls, few and far between, that if you give them six to seven hours, that can't let go a little bit. And that's where you have to then determine is there something else deeper here? Is there sexual abuse going on here? There are many a night 
where I spent with a girl where the level of comfort that I got with her was just to me sexually pleasuring her with my tongue, right? And my fingers, tongue and fingers. And we just kept it there. I brought her to full orgasm there. And that's all she was comfortable with. On the day four, on the day five, then the deeper level of penetration came through, right? Many a time. But, and I was okay with that. It's okay. I just take her to the level that she's comfortable with. And that, and girls often with that case uh, have had some pretty sexually uh, horrific abuse before as well. But even if she hasn't, and she's just not psychologically there, Mr. Jose, just give her the time. Give her the time to breathe. And that's where I'll wrap this one up. And I just, again, want to reiterate that your super chat, whether it was $5 or $50 Mexican, just the fact that you were willing to support what we're doing here and what I'm doing here, I'm tremendously grateful. And, uh, you know, always remember this, and this is number one in terms of the number one super chat, um, in terms of financial, but also just the emotional, uh, what it means to me emotionally. So thank you so much. And, you know, it just goes back to everything we're doing here at The Bowl. And uh, hopefully you signed up to that, uh, bulk, the the bowl sip weekly email newsletter which comes out 3 20 p.m today for free but just so you guys know you guys you guys support that you know that email campaign is not free that's just not free but when you guys donate that goes straight into you know the services i can provide more content for you more value for you guys so thank you so much jose and hopefully that brought you some more content and value and what i'll say right here as well is that once this session is available for replay uh, give it some time. I'll, not only will it be on replay for YouTube, but it'll also be on replay on the Boulder Drew Podcast audio strip. I'll strip it down for you. So that'll be there. So yes, uh, my friends, I think the stream is good. And we have gone for two hours here. It's been a two-hour session. Now you guys know I am no stranger. I am no stranger to the long pod- podcasts. I've done two and a half hour podcasts before. But I'm not sure if we've done a two-hour social Q&A. I think we have one. I think one has. So what I'm going to do here is that, you know what's amazing? Is that my energy levels are fucking peaking. Normally at this stage in a podcast, I'm drained. I'm like, I'm like two hours is a long time to be doing what I'm doing with the level of energy I've got. But I feel like I'm feeling pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to go to the chat I'm just going to see if there's anything interesting that pops up. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up the session here. Uh, so don't add any more questions at this point, but please drop me a thumbs up down below on the video if you are enjoying this. And hey, if you just give me some feedback on the session, that'll be much appreciated. And uh, so I'll just say here, I'll just look in here. Uh, Abel Martinez says, what was the name of the audio device he was talking about? Schemo says UE boom. Schemo is fucking locked in, bro. <laughs> you got it, man. So here it is. UE boom. UE boom. And let me just provide you some real content. This is the version two. Listen, I've had this thing for like three years. It's only just now started to have some issues with connectivity. But this thing is a fucking amazing. Uh, if you guys watch me on Instagram, a lot of the times, like when you hear background music playing, it's often playing. And if, if you're like, oh, when I do my workout shit on the IG story and you're like, how is the music quality so damn good? It's because of this. I'm just going to type in here. There's a UE Boom 3 now, which is uh, even next level. Now, this is the small one. There's, UE, there's the UE Mega Boom, which is like twice the size of this. It's a fucking monster. But you don't even need that. You don't even, This thing will light up an entire house. If I play this and you put this on max volume, this is enough to support an entire party. This thing is insane. So I'm looking on here. It's $139 on Amazon AU for the UE, for the UE Boom 3. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see what number two is. But the reason why the guy he asked about that was because, oh, how about that? You can get a UE Boom 2, UE, a UE Boom 2 for $80 on eBay on eBay. That's Australian. I'm just that seems ridiculously cheap though. Let me just check that. I'm just gonna op- I'm just gonna open that link. Oh, it's like a uh, it's an it's like a secondhand, pretty dusted up. So yeah, you can get a pre-owned, eighty dollar ninety dollar US boom that looks like it's been trashed. Trashed. I would not recommend though because listen, this is a three year old. I've I've treated this really well, but it does have some connectivity issues when they get older. But uh, they're looking at about hundred and fifty bucks, hundred something like that. But worth the investment. I take this everywhere. I I take this to day twos, uh, day threes. If I'm going to a girl's apartment, this is in my backpack. 
with my green tea, with my candle, this and my and my USB with movies loaded on it or whatever, my UE booms in my backpack. This goes with me everywhere. Where I travel, it goes with me to New York, to fucking Toronto, to Melbourne last week. This is with me everywhere. It's worth it, trust me. They don't even pay me to say that. They should. <laughs> they should. I'm their biggest fan. So yeah, that's a great speaker. And uh, I, and just on the tactics, why was I speaking about the speaker? Because you should have a Spotify playlist with sexual tracks. I call it the Panda Emperor. Um, my Wu Tang Nine Thousand playlist has is not a sexual playlist. Should let me let me know, guys. If you would you like would you like me to create a a uh, sexually inti- a sexual intimacy? Let's call it the uh, the deep dive. Let's call it the deep dive playlist or whatever. Uh, on Spotify, I can make another playlist if you wish, and I'll put all my recommended tracks for sexual intimacy on there. Um, let me know, and uh, we can put it on, and we can, and maybe we can do like some contribution stuff where maybe uh, you guys can vote, maybe to get your own tracks in there. Maybe we can do something like that. I don't know, um, whatever. I can just let me know. But anyways, I have my own private thing called the Panda Emperor, which is a track that if I get into a car with a girl, if I bring a girl back. If I'm making food of her or whatever, I play this. And of course, I can't play any of the tracks now because YouTube will pull me because it's monetized. But uh, there's so many amazing tracks on this. Um, also, another track by Khalid that you guys want to check out. It's a great one for uh, a sexy time is Caught Up. It's called Caught Up by Majid Jordan uh, featuring Khalid. Another great one. So, <clears throat> my friends, this is where we're going to wrap up this social Q&A live. This has been a real session. An absolute, oh, oh shit. Schemo just donated $2.99 Australian saying awesome session with the, uh, with the peace sign. Schemo, I really appreciate it. Truly appreciate it. The, uh, it's really, the, mo- the monetary sum is not really that important to me. Just the fact that you don't, you guys don't have to donate anything. Right? You don't do anything. I'll be donating my time here an hour and a half or two hours a week just to try and, uh, just to be here for you guys. Just trying the best value, offer the best value I can. The fact that Scammer here has donated two dollars ninety nine, it's still fucking amazing to me. It goes straight back to the channel, it helps support everything that I do, and uh, it's yeah, really appreciated, really appreciated. So thank you guys so much. Uh, Jose Pablo says thanks, uh, thanks Sensei. No worries, my friend. No worries. Um, it's incredible. It's life is com- incredible. Life is very rare, so let's not take it for granted. And this is where we're gonna wrap up this session. If you guys did enjoy it, drop that thumbs up on the video down below. Drop me a comment in post. I will come back and ask questions, answer questions if you've got further questions, if I didn't address them here. And, uh, oh, oh, that's right. That's right. Here we go. I I had a little post-it note of a question that I said I was going to address at the beginning, but because we've got this two super chat, at the super chat, I didn't get time to answer it. It's too big of a question anyway to answer in a short time. So it's from Squat Bro, and it was on uh, maintaining masculinity when you're in a monogamous relationship. So I'm going to save this. We might make this the next social Q&A. Yeah, we might make this the next the topic for the next one because I don't have time. I'm really running over time now. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll pin that up. I'll make sure I address that next time, Squat Bro. So my man, my friends, I thank you so much for being here, and I wish you all the best in your lives. What a time, what a time. Much peace and much joy.